Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi. 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 Hello. It's it's Art and Keith and me. Um, it's Art and Keith and me o'clock. <clears throat> it's not. It's it's seven forty two here in Michigan, and it's a different time for Art, for reasons that they've tried to work out, but nobody has. <laughs> we are here. Slowly, Art is becoming the only person on the West Coast. Yeah, not slowly. It happens. Yeah, now everyone. Everyone else is in Eastern time now. I used to have three people out here. Yeah. <laughs> and one of them was Allie, which is a very powerful person to have out here. I It was powerful for me, too, when I was in the UK, because it put so much time between, like, my deadline and her deadline. That was that was really pleasant. Where, like, I would have, like, ages to finish a thing because she hadn't got up in Los Angeles yet. Right. Um, sure. But now, yeah. And I thought you were saying in the sense, like, scheduling things taking into account people's time zones being six hours ahead means you really had to take it serious no scheduling it, it absolutely sucked and it, i was i was eight hours ahead um and i never fell asleep but i only got close once um, oh right you were you were sometimes six or 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 uh, sorry uh six or nine hours ahead of art yes and we were recording yeah. at like at like we would wrap recordings at four o'clock in the morning. You got it. it's just yeah. a nightmare. Um, yeah. But we made a good show, and you know, it's... yeah, sure. And I got the right amount of sleep. It was just it was just offset slightly differently. You just weren't interacting with anyone in person. I just wasn't interacting with anybody in person. No. Um, okay, so uh, we are here today to deliver to you um, uh, things that you uh, unlocked for yourselves when you so generously donated to the National Network of Abortion Funds during our fundraiser in J uh, July 2022. Um, it was a great time. I was looking at the at the uh, like. The recap of that stream, the, the things we did, the games we played, we had a great time streaming, uh, like, on a large scale, which is, on the one hand, I don't think of ourselves as the kind of people who are like, oh, we're big marathon Twitch streamers, but it was it was great, and uh, we looked after our bodies, and we had a good time, and we were able to raise a lot of money thanks to people's generosity. Um, three of the things that we did raise were a talk through various Hyron music demos, um, uh, a skeleton apology, uh, and we can talk more about that later. And then finally, the sort of grudge match, the 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 long promised game of uh, Sangfiel's. I don't know if it's Sangfiel's favorite card game. It's a card game they play in Sangfiel. It's uh, their called... fourth favorite card game. Is it their fourth favorite card game? Yeah, they have they huge have go fish people in like Sangfiel. Do you think they play poker in Sangfiel? They almost certainly do, right? So here's the. I'll tell you exactly what I think they play. I think they play a lot of euchre. What is Yuka? Which is a game oh. that I don't know what it means. I just know that the there's people in my life that for some reason means. have been very passionate about Euchre. And it feels like a very mysterious game that doesn't really exist. Because it's sort of like, it just feels like Euchre. What? Um, I know what Euchre yeah. is, and I will tell you right after I ask Jack, is the rerun tag really on this stream, or is my interface being weird? Oh, let it... me see. Oh, it is on this stream. Let me get rid of that. We, we're not rerunning. We're here. We're live. This is real. This is this is this is real. Yeah, Euchre is a Michigan game. And I'm in if Michigan I, right if, now. If I understand correctly, a Euchre is a is a word for people who live in the upper peninsula? No, that is Yupa. <laughs> I believe Euchre is a is a derivation of that. Huh. Okay. Uh well, I do know at Gen Con, living... the convention that we performed at a few years back, they have the Euchre National Championships as part of that convention. Is it a trick-taking wow. game? What is the mechanic? It is a trick-taking game. The The weirdest thing about Euchre, well, one, Jack is the highest I card. <laughs> so maybe it's for you. Great. Um, um, this is what I know about Euchre is that it's a trick-taking game. And then it's always just like, it doesn't mean anything. That You still have to explain what a trick is because <laughs> yeah. there's not a lot of trick-taking games. Uh, it's a team's trick building, trick taking game. You're you're partnered with the person across from you, like in bridge. Okay. And I don't, I, um, game. I don't know how to play. I have no <laughs> idea how to play bridge, but I know it has pairs. I know you're a partner, and they like take half the deck out. I think it goes down to like eight or something. Like there's no cards below an eight or a seven or something in there. Huh. Okay. Uh, very. Uh, 
not not good for our Bellatro deck, uh, where we're trying to make straights with the middle with the middle cards yeah. for the most part. Uh, growing up in Massachusetts, going to high school, like, for some reason there was like a small group of people in my friend group. I say small; it was like four or five people in my friend group that all loved euchre for some reason, and were always talking about playing euchre and trying to get everyone to play euchre, and it never really happened. And they tried explaining it, and no one, no one understood, and so they just went off and played euchre on their own. That's sad. That is quite sad. Uh, before we continue, I don't Laura. feel like I missed out. <laughs> Levels, anyway, that's why they play Euchre in Sangfiel. Yeah, that is. Uh, also, the um, uh, do you remember the woman in Sangfiel who just makes you disappear and you never come back? She just does like a horrible magic trick on you. Uh, that's I feel like favorite game. She plays a variety of blackjack where the number that you want to get up to is just astonishingly high, and she just deals thousands and thousands of cards. Uh, and, you know, you keep saying, hit me, and she puts down another card, and the total is now, you know, 6,000. You haven't slept in days. She's dealing out card after card. Oh, Millennium Blackjack. <laughs> Millennium Blackjack, uh, home of the uh, owner of the casinos in Bluff City. Um, <laughs> it's Millennium not for the year, but, but for the amount of cards you're dealt. Yes, for the amount of cards that you're dealt. A um, millennium of cards. An entire millennium of cards. But I think we're going to begin with a uh, look through some of the Sangfiel music demos. Now now that we have introduced this, Art and Keith, you can just piss off if you want to. Um, sure. Or you can continue to hang out. It is up to you. It seems unsporting to... So what, just to arrive and leave? <laughs> yeah, just... Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure how we were going to do it. I'm, I'm totally free to stick around. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Um, I am going to go over to the playing screen where you should be able to see um, the beautiful uh, a Microsoft, uh, no, not Microsoft, Google <laughs> Slides. Oh. Uh, this is not a Microsoft house here. Um, I am no Microsoft Bing user. Uh, well, you're outnumbered here. I mean, Google House, not a, not a much better of a house. Oh, it's not a better house. It's just it's it's about what you have the familiarity with, I imagine. Sure. Um. All right. Let me. I just tried to turn on my webcam. That would have been startling, especially since one is not connected. Um. I'm just gonna share this with Keith and with Art. Okay. So. Um, my focus mainly here is on Spring and Hyron. By this point, uh, in making the Hyron soundtracks, I had got a pretty solid um, uh, workflow together. And so while I have weird scattered notes from earlier Hyron seasons, uh, the one that I have sort of the best like archival uh, uh, set for is Spring and Hyron. By that point, I thought I knew what I was doing uh, and I, I set myself up. Um, pretty much ready to go. I have the original um, Hyron theme on an extremely aging, decaying laptop in the UK. It was it was written in Audacity, um, and I have this very bad Audacity file. If that hard drive even still works, um, although I did uh, when we when we wrote the end of Spring and Hyron, I couldn't get some component of the final track to sound right, whether it was a banjo part or like the little glockenspiel bells. And I had to boot up this aging computer. You know, its bet its battery was dead, uh, and I just plugged in um, the uh, the power cable and and held it there while this computer took forty five minutes to start and extracted one tiny you know sample from from that track. Um, but my main focus here is going to be Spring and Hyron. Um, and I think it's probably worth saying we're going to talk uh, about uh, Spring and Hyron spoilers here. Uh, this is a, a, a selection of music from throughout the whole season. Um, so this is your last warning. If you haven't heard Spring and Hyron yet, um, not only are you going to hear what happens in it, you're going to hear uh, sort of um, inexpertly played uh, music demos. Um, so the first thing that we have here is this is something I wrote in September the tw uh, September twenty first, twenty eighteen, um, and I sent Austin a message on Discord saying, uh, and I think we were still in pre production. Um, I think spring starts with a solo piano, like ringing bells. I think it's the piano mimicking bells in a tower, not like a falling peal of bells, but like this is a very sparse sound. Um, and going from Winter, which was just uh, a miserable soundtrack, just empty and and uh, cold, I wanted to keep this sort of sparse feeling going throughout Spring, 
but um, uh, add some warmth to it um, and add some some sort of uh, maybe lightness as we see Hyron uh, uh, begin to move into spring. So I think this is the first thing I wrote. Um, this should work if I click this and I can't speak to the volume levels. We shall find out. I think my goal was to make sure that I could get it sitting nicely over the um, the Hyron acoustic guitar line uh, that sort of you know uh, begins all the Hyron seasons. Um, I knew I wanted the theme to be a pretty straightforward adaptation, but I think coming in on these open like the the, the ringing bells uh, in a tower, uh, this very open sound, and then and then going into that um, kind of bridged the gap from winter to more of the sound for spring. Um, as I went on there. Let's see what we have here. Okay, so this is September the 9th. The first one was Oh wow, so this is this is actually earlier than the last one that I wrote. Um and here I have a midsection that I don't think is the midsection I ended up using. This one has a banjo and a clarinet in it. Um I always really enjoyed writing Hyron themes because the structure of them was so um, straightforward. You know, we have that that piano motif that begins, and then we just move into a midsection for what sixteen bars, and then back out. Uh, it's it's nice and straightforward. You know, I, I know where the work needs to be done um, in terms of making a, a Hyron theme theme feel uh, new, and it's in that sixteen bars in the middle. Um, I don't think there's any processing on this track yet. I haven't done any, um, you know, reverb or any digital processing on the instruments. But um, at this point, I'm overdubbing instruments, which means I'm pretty confident about what I am uh, actually recording. Uh, my least confident recordings, and you'll hear a few of these as we go, are when I've just propped the um, my, my phone on the piano or on the guitar, and I'm playing it as quickly as possible before I forget. Um, but generally, when I tend to get a bit more confident, I can start overdubbing. Um, I think the problem with this midsection, and um, we can hear, is that uh, there's a real sort of lack of focus on the melody lines. Um, I, I think that when I am writing quickly at the beginning of a composition, and I think this is the same with, you know, uh, all kinds of writing, um, I can get uh, uh, excited or energetic about putting stuff down, just sort of feeling the sentences following naturally um, without having any of that kind of focus or discretion. Um, and it's those next steps, that process of like refining and editing and re-recording to take a line and cut it back as far as possible um, to seeing where, uh, see, see, you know, see what is really necessary. Um, okay, let's see.
<laughs> just flaming out at the end. Had enough of that. Uh, Jack, I'm shocked to hear how much of the final song is in Spring Scratch 1. Yeah. I, you There's know, a lot well, there. It's like I, I know the bits that I want pretty early on. It's it, The problem is that you can't just have... Um, there need to be other bits, bits that you haven't come up with uh, immediately yet. And getting that yeah. last 20% of the way is... I, I guess it's surprising, you know, I'm hearing the, the in both this and the last one, you've got the, like, guitar is almost exact. Yeah, pretty and much. Is that the banjo? That's the backbone. Yes. <laughs> it was a banjo, yeah. Um, I saw Is that how... Oh, sorry. I have banjo questions, but they can wait till the I end. Don't know. I can answer some banjo questions. Um, someone in the chat asked, is that MIDI? I, I uh, saw you uh, talking recently about actually getting a piano. This is uh, all the Hiron stuff is live. Um, this was my piano in the UK. Uh, the piano I got recently um, was the piano in Michigan. Getting a piano across the Atlantic is a uh, privilege only available to someone who has the, the, the wealth of kings, as I understand. Or a boat. They already got a boat. Or they've already got a boat. Um, a piano boat. Is... Yes. What are your banjo questions? Is that how you learn to play the... Did you learn the banjo formally or informally? Informally. And is that like... Is that what it, banjo music still sounds like in England? No. Uh, no. I can't play like Scruggs picking. Um, Scruggs, yes. Yeah. I know like... I had a brief thought of like... Is Scruggs picking only in America? Have they invented Scruggs picking in England? Um, no. no the guy Earl Scruggs. That's yeah. The guy, that's the guy's not British. Scruggs. Lord Scruggs? <laughs> Lord. You no, know, sorry. The Earl of Scruggs. <laughs> oh, Earl of the Earl of Scruggs. Earl he, Scruggs. He yeah. Invented the sandwich. Is it Earl. Now I'm saying guessing myself that his name's not Earl. Scruggs. It is Earl. No, it is Earl. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. No, yeah. I've always, um, I've always really liked, um. Keith put me onto Bella Fleck uh, years ago, and Abigail. Is that true? Abigail Wash. Is her name Abigail Washburn? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The sort of the reigning scions of banjo. They're married oh, the as well, Washburns. right? Yes. Um, and uh, you know, I've always loved their stuff, but um, and I can play, you know, um, banjo rolls and Scruggs picking, very, very slowly, very badly. Um, a lot of what interests me about uh, instruments strung like guitars and guitar-like instruments is uh, um, playing them in non-standard ways or extended ways. Um, I don't think I've used a 12-string on Friends at the Table, but I did a lot of stuff with finger-picking on a 12-string years ago, and that was a huge amount of fun when, you know, instead, I feel like the standard way of playing that is that you play these big chords, you know, these, these fat, beautiful 12-string chords. Um, and so I just liked the sound of the banjo um picked like a like a guitar i think i'd heard sofian stevens play it like that before um yeah they don't have banjos in sang fiel uh radiant lesbian in the chat says begging for banjo in the sang fiel 2 soundtrack they might have a banjo austin may may maybe mentioned a banjo once but i believe that they the they have only invented the electric guitar in sang fiel that's the only guitar they have um but i'm not sure uh, okay, let's see. What do we have next? Ooh, this is this is called Town Theme Scratch. It's worth saying that these are the file names that they were saved as in my uh, work documents. This is from November the 14th. And at this point in the show, I'm curious if Keith and Art, uh, you also remember this, but like when we were early in production on Spring, we were having a lot of talk about um, the... The Last University as sort of being this like locus uh, for where the season would take place, you know, we're all based in the university, and we go out to the university and kind of and kind of uh, you know bring people back, and that was how the structure of the season ended up working for the most part. But I think early on, and you know, in like November 2018, we were it's talking because that sounds more like uh, spring. This is spring. This is spring. Yeah. Oh, this is spring. Oh, right. Of course, this is spring. Yes, that is how that works. <laughs> I'm in my, I have my head in autumn for some reason. No, no, no. This is, Keith, look at the beautiful spring imagery. I know, I know. I'm, I can see. Um, and, you know, we do, we do have that structure a lot in the season, but I think during this pre-production stage, we were talking about it a lot as like a town in an RPG where, you know, we would like see the town change. Uh, we'd see things get built. We'd see new communities come in and, and go out. And so I, I started trying to write a 
town theme for the last university that could get, you know, built on top of uh, as, you know, new elements come in. So I was trying to write something that both evoked like a PlayStation RPG town theme and also had a lot of room to bolt stuff onto in terms of the arrangement or in terms of harmony lines. Um, and I think that probably the smart money would have been to write the complete track and then deliberately subtract from it, you know, and, and, and initially release the 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 uh, lighter version. But instead, I only wrote the light version and just sort of left it um, there. Uh, my notes say that at this point I had the chords down, but I'm still feeling out stuff alongside the core melody. Um, this is all pretty, uh, but I really wanted it to be, you know, super, super simple. So I cut away a lot of the melody line uh, or, you know, the um, notes in the melody that could be better served by being, you know, repurposed into harmony lines or into chords go into the, go into the arrangement. Um, again, like, this is a track that I think will probably sound fairly similar to the one that uh, ends up in the show, but there's a lot of, you know, like... Um, garbage there's like a lot of craft around the lines that i'm writing and that subtractive process uh was you know the the, the real work of getting it finished <laughs> to that one at the end i feel like i was in, more in control of what i was uh writing than i thought i was but a lot of it needed to go um okay now we're going to move on to tell me uh which is the song sung uh by samuel um before his death uh about his uh wayward son um for all of these much to the chagrin of austin um, I kept doing a Lem Faro thing with Samot and Samo. Um, I knew the difference between them. I uh, have been working on the show for a long time, but I confused them all the time. And all my notes for this are called Samot Song, etc. <laughs> uh, um, uh, this is from January the 20th, 2019. Um, it was recorded with an iPhone sitting on top of Art's guitar. Shout out to Art's guitar. Uh, Did you ever find <laughs> that guitar, by the way? Yeah, it's over here. Yeah. 
And oh, you found the you found a new one to get. Yeah, yeah. have we told the story about Art's guitar on a recording? <laughs> oh, definitely so. not. Okay, so Art uh, had a guitar for a long time and wasn't playing it, uh, and so very kindly kind of lent it to me. And this guitar is beautiful. It is uh, what is it? It's a Seagull uh, S6 original. Which is funny. We learned that that you have. It's the. It's just basically the slightly bigger version of the guitar that I also have. Yeah. Purely uh, coincidentally. It is a beautiful guitar. Um, Art's guitar had like um. I put silk and steel strings on my guitar, and I'm getting a little tired of them, honestly. I've been a silk and steel girly for, you know, most of my life, and I think the time is coming for it. You know when you say, you sit in the hairdressers and you're like, I think I want to do something special this time. I think the time has come for me to change out for, a, you know, a slightly harder sound. But Art's guitar had a slightly harder strings than silk and steel on, um, and I loved this guitar so much. Uh, and then when, just before I moved house, Art said, I want to learn how to play the guitar. Uh, can I have my guitar back? And I said, of course you can. But I liked I liked his guitar so much that I wanted to buy the same one um, and couldn't because it turns out that the guitar Art has is not a Seagull S6 original. <laughs> it's um, the best. At, at all. It is a special type of Seagull guitar. It's not super rare. Well, I mean, what we ended up with is extremely rare. But uh, it's not like a very rare uh, high-end guitar or whatever. It's a, a mid-end nice acoustic guitar that Seagull made in maybe 2006 to 2008. And somewhere on the production line, they fucked up and an entire batch of guitars had the wrong stickers applied to them. And Keith and I looked into this and we have only been able to identify three of these guitars in the world. <laughs> we found one on Reverb uh but but had the same sticker in because there are certain like weird characteristics to this guitar it doesn't have a pick guard which the essex original does it right, has when you this... look at it you can tell that it's not the guitar that it says that it is no yeah 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 absolutely not uh, but it was baffling because we we, we we were some sort of like well what has happened here right but um, also it is it's very close it's just like you can just still see like it's almost right it's almost right i didn't right. buy this anywhere weird i bought this at the guitar center on sunset boulevard like, yes. I didn't go to a strange place or buy it on the internet or something. And of course, this was so funny <clears throat> that it meant that I just had to, I, well, I had to get it, right? I, you know, we just had to find another one of these weird guitars. Uh, so yeah, we found one online where the like, neck was damaged or something. Uh, that's one. Then there's Art's guitar. That's two. And then there's my guitar. <laughs> that's three. Um... I love it very much. It's a beautiful guitar. Uh, uh, it is, by all accounts, an extremely, you know, mid-range acoustic guitar that, by dint of being kind of, like, mislabeled, uh, has this weird pseudo-rarity to it. Um, yeah. It. The, the great thing about it is that because this is clearly just, like, one day on the assembly line, they were stamping the wrong guitars into the wrong, you know, crate or something. Yeah. So it could be, it could be there are a dozen of these and they caught it really quickly but it was too late to fix or there could be hundreds and hundreds of these it could right, be right, right. yeah because again like if you hadn't tried to find it we would i would never, never have it. known yeah and realistically like these guitars are essentially the same price like it's not like some yeah they yeah there's, there's no additional sold you a martin guitar no. no they sold me like the folk guitar instead of yeah. the regular guitar but but not again not quite not it's quite. very strange uh an yeah. odd day on the so the this guitar assembly line no one knows how they make guitars is a fun other yeah artist. no one knows how they make guitars they are handmade for the most part right humans have to put the guitars together i don't think they oh. uh... in any case here is samote samote song guitar test um, let's see. This is, uh, this is kind of the first test for seeing how the tune, the, the melody sits on top of the guitar part. I don't love writing songs, you know, songs with lyrics that I sing. Um, I, it's very difficult for me to sort of make a song happen from scratch. I sort of have to be in this very specific mood where I'm like, ah, a song, go! Um, 
where, where you know I, I have a lot of experience writing music from scratch sort of not really having an idea sitting down and working on it um the songs that i have done for the show have all kind of come from this moment uh, of um sister rust and then tell me and then the golden age um have all come from this kind of moment where i have been seized with this kind of manic energy you know I don't think it's like a bolt of inspiration or whatever. Very often when I sit down, the thing that immediately comes out is, is, is you know, putative uh, sort of basic stuff. But um, it really is. It's like a fell mood in Dwarf Fortress. Um, and so I think at this point, I just wanted to, like, I'm feeling the feeling. Let's get going. So I knew the chords that I wanted, um, but as you can hear, you can just change the feel up of a song so spectacularly, uh, especially on the guitar where, you know, you're working with this really percussive sound. Um, and I wanted to know how I was going to pick my way through that. And I think um, what I end up with is something a lot gentler than than what I've got there. My brick cat's in the chat. Are you familiar with that sound of abruptly stopping yeah. in the middle of playing on <laughs> yes. a phone recording? I have a Twilight Mirage demo. Um, where the uh, phone falls off the side of my piano. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it was like balanced wrong and you can just hear the phone hit the deck and me go like, shit, distantly. Um, <laughs> Library Cats in the chat asks, do you usually arrange first or do you improvise bars and build from there? Um, I almost always improvise bars and build from there. Um, I will usually, when I'm working on a track, hmm. I'll get a sense of, of the shape of the track and of the vibe and, and you know, often of its, like, the basic, the basic structure of its arrangement very quickly. Um, but I want, to, I want to sketch as broadly as possible um, before going in and, and adding the arrangement. What does happen sometimes is I sort of accidentally create, like, a video game vertical slice where I get really excited about how I'm going to arrange... Um, you know, a period of eight bars or whatever, and pile a load of energy and, and focus and and you know detail into those into those eight bars and get them basically finished, the arrangement of them finished. And then of course the playhead hits the end of those eight bars and we just go crashing into this like vapid, empty, <laughs> you know, st structure of the rest of the track where no arrangement has happened yet. Um arranging is 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 some of my favorite stuff to do. Um I love I love decorating the cake, um, and I feel like, uh, and I love I love making the the cake mixture, and you know, uh, cutting out all the sponge cake. The what do Americans call sponge cake? Sponge cake. Sponge, sponge cake? cake. Sponge cake. Um, but sometimes that feels like you know the, the stuff I have to get through to, before I can start, uh, you know, doing the doing the nice decoration. Oh, I see. Okay, so now this is me trying to put the tune over it. I got these. I got these notes the wrong way around. Um, this is still Sam Wall. Yep, this is still Sam Wall. But uh, you will have noticed that I have called this Samoat Song Scratch One. At this point, Austin over two, <laughs> uh, over, over two. And you're only seeing this in my notes. You know, we don't have a name for this song yet. And as Austin and I are talking it through, he keeps saying Samoal, and I keep saying, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> okay. As the person who frequently misspelled Hyron on our organizational documents, I hear you. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt the track. No, no, no. It's okay. it, it barely it barely started. <laughs>
think I sing, I met an old man walking there in the late hours of a winter evening. I think the song at that point was um, Samo. I'm doing it correctly this time. Uh, singing about himself. He is the focal character in, in the song. Um, let's see. Uh, at this point, and I'm kind of impressed. I sang that over playing the guitar part. I'm so bad at playing the guitar and singing at the same time. Um, I love it. It feels great. But it is, you know... I feel like it's way it's way harder than you think it is. It's so hard, and I spent. If you don't play the guitar, and you, if you don't play the guitar, it might seem like playing the guitar and singing is is only a little bit harder than playing the guitar by itself. But it's not. It's like twice as hard. And you're you're playing, you're playing. What's the word? Um, hand independence. You need hand independence when you play the guitar generally. Uh, you know, with your right hand and your left hand doing very different things. And then when you're singing on top of that, it's just, it's like patting your head and, and rubbing your stomach. And invariably what ends up happening but you have to, is... You're doing very, something very complicated on your stomach. Yes, yes, it's exactly. Patting your head and finger picking on your stomach. Yes, yes. It's, oh, it's, it's a nightmare. Um, I think we changed the focus of the song from Samal to Samot when we, you know, it sort of clicked in our head what the song was about, you know, where we were like, oh shit, it, it, this is about his relationship with his son. Um, and we're, you know, that's the thing that we really, we really want to dig into. And at that point, it was one of those decisions that you make that uh, as soon as you've done it, you go, oh, right. And now this makes sense. And now that bit, you know, we can, we can fix that in there. Um, when I'm singing over the guitar here, um, and usually when I'm singing in demos, I'm singing really, really loosely, um, just sort of floating over the guitar line, which is uh, uh, so much fun. And I feel it's the way that you know we all sing when we're singing to ourselves or when we're singing along with the radio. You know, we're not locked to the measure lines in quite the same way as you are, you know, in a, in a finished produced track. But I'm also a really irritating perfectionist about my own work. And so invariably what happens when I go through that process of working from demos to a, a finished track or whatever, is that I lose some of that looseness. You know, I lose some of that, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the sort of the gentleness of not locking yourself too hard to the rhythm. Um, but something I tried really hard to do with Tell Me was try and push myself not to get too solid, you know, um, as, 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 as hard as possible. Um, Gus of Rack says, did we miss True False War? We did not. True False War is coming at the end of the stream. For a reason that- True False War, like any largely untested game, should not, should be given an unlimited amount of time. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, okay, so now we have the song title, but we do <laughs> but I'm, I'm now over three. This is Still the wrong, still the wrong person. Rough. You are apparently a little loud, Art. I am going to turn you down very slightly. All right. I can also just move a little bit further from the mic. It's funny because at any point between incorrectly naming the song until now, it could have been changed. <laughs> it could have been corrected <laughs> somewhere along the line while the season was still in production, most likely. Yeah. Yeah. But no. But uh, I'm glad now we have it as an artifact. Yeah. In two, in more than one sense. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and and frankly, who cares what the songs are named before they're in the show? Yes, absolutely. It, it's not real until it's until it's in the show. It, all of my um, all of my songs in production are in like my project files are named for the the scene that they are in. You know, it would be like Michael dies, or you know, it would be like Greg goes to heaven. <laughs> Boilers about Michael and Greg, um, the beloved character. The writing is on the wall. Yeah, the writing was on the wall for those guys. Uh, <laughs> but this was especially funny when we were doing Partisan, where the tracks in Partisan are deliberately named extremely confusingly. They have those cash uh, triple diagrams uh, for their song titles. But on my uh, screen, they're just like, you know, mech fight with X, um, <laughs> which is a lot of fun. Uh, sometimes I will... Uh, we'll, see, we'll see that later, I think, as, as we go. Okay, uh, so here I'm trying to figure out the bridge... Um, I like this demo a lot. We didn't have words for this yet. Um, but in any in any of my writing, um, finding the shape of phrases uh, and how the phrasing of the melody lines work is is where the most intense work comes. I really like writing very 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 simple melodies. I've always liked writing, you know, 
extremely straightforward melody lines. Um, and part of that is that that subtractive process, you know, cutting it back as far as I can. And part of it is trying to be um, really careful about the shapes of the phrases, you know, how the phrases uh, move. I, I've talked in the past about, um, you know, thinking of phrases in music as uh, asking questions and, and, and answering your own questions or saying one thing and then saying it very slightly differently. Um, and I think playing around with those kinds of uh, phrasings is, is really fun and is, is often pretty intense work. Um, you can hear that, uh, that I've already put processing on my voice here. Uh, there are a couple of reasons that I do that. Um, the first is that uh, I, I love composing uh, and sometimes getting to the point where I am, you know, sitting with the instruments, with my headphones on in front of the microphone feels like the most insurmountable, you know, uh, cliff in the world. I, I, I am, you know, it's the uh, writing and worrying for six days about an email that takes six minutes to write, et cetera, um, feel. So I like to... Um, set myself up for success by having sort of the project file as ready to go uh, as possible to have processing on to, you know, be able to put my headphones on and hear uh, some approximation of what the track is going to sound like as quickly as possible. Um, the other reason is that uh, I am self-conscious about my voice, um, my, my singing voice, uh, less so now. Less so after doing Sang Fiel, where I just deliberately, you know, forced myself to sing as, as much as possible. Um, I don't know if, if Keith, you know, you've been podcasting for so long that you, you're fine hearing your own voice now, 100%, right? Keith might be um, muted. Yeah, I think that I, sorry, I was uh, next door at the ta other table. And um, you came dashing in. I came dashing in. Uh, yeah, I'm totally fine with my own voice, 100%. Yeah, and I think, uh, are you are? Oh, absolutely not. If um, if I have to listen to my own voice, it, it's a if it's I a was process singing, of girding myself and then a cool down. Yeah. If I was singing and I had to listen to myself singing, like to a so if I had written a song and wrote lyrics and recorded the lyrics and was listening back, I feel like I would claw my eyes out. I yeah. feel like I would hate that so much. So I I. <laughs> I've gotten so used to hearing my speaking voice and I'm fine with that. I like my speaking voice, but whenever I hear myself singing, I'm like, who's that clown? You know? There's I'm... something like with, with the guitar, you know, uh, I'm pretty good at the guitar. I can play something, you know, really locked in if I need to, I tend to play kind of loose. I kind of fee find like, strings string noises and ghost notes uh uh charming in music yeah, yeah, yeah. even when it's my own music but there's something about hearing my voice and feet and i just can tell that it's not very good and i'm like there's and i couldn't do it better if i wanted to it just is what it is there's something about like if i tried really hard i could get any guitar part more perfect than i have it but i can't make my voice a different voice. I mean, it's tough, right? Because I'm sure with, t I am sure with time, you could, I'm certain. But, but it sucks to hear, right? <clears throat> you know, whenever people say to me, you'll improve, trust yourself, I go, ah. Yeah. The flip side is that uh, everybody thinks that the, uh, that your voice sounds excellent and all of the friends of the table stuff with your voice in it. And I agree, it sounds really good. That means a it's lot. And but my voice is bad. Right, right. Yes. Bad. Yeah, I, I, I also agree that that your work is very good and I, that if anyone had to, if I had to sing on the show, I would quit. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. I, you know, it means a lot that people, that people say that and, and it definitely is encouraging to hear people say that. But it, it, I feel like it holds me back, you know, in something like this where we are, where I'm, you know, putting processing on it so quickly. I'm putting processing on it because I'm afraid to hear my voice, uh, um like dry, dry without processing, like a, like, yeah. a, a, like a flat dry signal. Um, and it sucks because I listen some to- some of the most talented people of all time. It's true. I you mean, know, but then Nick I Drake think about- Nick Drake hated his voice, Jimi Hendrix hated his voice. Does Nick Drake sing with, re no, Nick Drake sings dry, right? He does, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I think about like Donald Fagan of Steely Dan has one of the weirdest voices, you know, known to man. Uh, he sings like a little freak. 
and Jerry it's Jenkins. and it's and it's incredible. Um, and so, I love his voice. I think he's a fantastic. I think he's voice. a fantastic voice. Um, but he does sound like an absolute weirdo. Um, and so you know, I, I, it doesn't. I, I understand academically what is happening, but I still feel this kind of anxiety, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is, somebody says this in the chat. Yeah, I feel there's a necessity to divorce understanding your voice as a representation of yourself and instead as an instrument with incredibly individualized tone. And this was really part of what the Sangfiel process was like for me. I saw someone in chat earlier saying that, you know, one of their favorite feelings in Sangfiel was like being halfway through a track and suddenly realizing that what you were hearing was a voice. Um... And in San Fiel, you know, I just pushed my voice as hard as I could uh, all the way through the through the range. And that was that was a delight. Um, but as soon as I have to sing words, I'm like, well, you know, mm. piece of shit. But anyway, in any case, I think this sounds quite pretty. And I think my phrasing here is really, really, really nice. And I wish that I could keep some of this looseness in the final version. Um, I've written down in my notes here, demos being better than the final thing. It is a sad truth that often... In some parts, demos are better than the final thing. Yeah, what can you do? Fuck, this is the wrong track. I, I can't believe that I did this. I fucked up Mr. Goot. Now, if I'd been using, uh, if I'd been using Chrome, it would have worked fine. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off the screen while I ensure that the uh, actual track is, is correct. Insert audio. Is it just a repeat of the last scratch that you did? It was just a repeat of the last scratch okay, that I did. Yeah. Um... What is this called? This is called Tell Me Bridge Scratch Samote Song. Yeah. We're back. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da Um, you can hear the click track in the back, everyone's favorite game, going splashing off into the depths away from the click track. <laughs> they put click tracks there to tempt you. Um, <laughs> they're not, that's, no. They put them where to tempt you? Uh, you know, <laughs> we'll find out one day, Keith. Okay. Uh, okay, Samote song, first full demo, 0 for 4. Uh, okay, January 21st, 2019. Um, Sir Squiggle says, oh, you went back to this for Fall of Magic, huh? I think this was after Fall of Magic, right? I don't know. Enough of the song is now in place to do a full-length demo. I was really happy with this demo, um, but I came out of it feeling like it was a bit limp. It was a bit morose. Um, and part of that moroseness was in the performance. You know, I needed to change where I was, you know, focusing energy um, in the words to sort of power it up a bit more. And part of it was in the production. So what it, what it really said to me was that, you know, I needed to do some additional arrangement in this track to, to give it a bit more, mm, it's fine if it's morose, it's a kind of morose song, but I don't want the energy level to feel just like a straight flat line. Um, a lot of these scratch tracks are doubling as rehearsal. When I do songs like this, I just play them over and over and over and over and over again. You will hear a little click echo, uh, which is a bug on either the track going through processing or like, um, I think it might actually be my headphone cable hitting the back of the guitar. Uh, this is overdubbed. Um... Oh, it's the click track. There 
is a corpse upon a hill Five tall pine trees stand breathing Just ending the ending the recording as soon as it was finished. Um, we had had a lyric change there. We changed um mist in the air on the track to uh extend the image. It says, I know the final version says, I know the birds in the cottonwoods, comma watching him go down the track. Ask when will he be back? I think that's just better better writing. It, it broadens out an image from you know uh three separate ideas. I know the birds in the cottonwoods. Idea one. Mist in the air on the track. Idea two. When will he be back? Idea three. It it turns them into one idea. I know the birds in the cottonwoods who are watching him go down the track are asking themselves bird-like, when will he be back? Um, Brendan in the chat asked, um, what's it like writing and singing a song from a specific character perspective, especially one like Samal, not Samot, who you do not often inhabit? How do you bring that perspective to the work? A lot of what was really helpful here was working on this song with Austin. Um, he and I sat down uh, and... Um, you know, hashed out lyrics um, piecemeal. We we sort of just opened a, a document, started writing as much as we could, uh, and then eventually, um, you know, we, we sort of got something in place. And then I took that and worked on it further to kind of snap it into place with the music. So being able to have Austin there and be like, uh, you know, can we talk more specifically about what embodying this character is going to be like was extremely helpful. Um, additionally, you know... Um, I sort of feel, and I don't know if Keith and Art feel the same way, that on some level, you know, we've picked up all the toys in the toolbox, all the toys in the toy box in front of us. Um, and so, you know, I don't think I have a lot of experience playing all the characters, but I could take a pretty solid crack at playing Duval um, in the same way that Art could take a solid crack at playing Pikmin. I don't think I'd be as good at Duval as he is. But there's a familiarity with the way we all work, I think, that for me at least lends a kind of confidence to picking up somebody else's character in that way. 
That's a funny well, thing to say on on a day where I'm like, can I really still do Hadrian and Duval? <laughs> <laughs> I believe in you. I believe in you absolutely. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I I think I get it though. I mean, I um, I think we we've all had a lot of practice do, doing the thing of playing a character. <laughs> Yeah, and, and we uh, hear on... each other talk so much. Yeah, and uh, you know, not not to say that like, you know, at some point doing one character from Song Fiel, it's just as hard as doing any other character from Song Fiel, and and it's getting the Song Fiel tone right that's more important than that's true. Like, yeah, knowing the particular, because because once once you get you know the Song Fiel tone or you know the higher on tone. And then it's just like, okay, well, now I just need to, like, think of this person, think of the details of this person. In some ways as well, there is a little bit of painting the target around the arrow going on, which is always a joy. Where it's like, one of the nice things about making the show is we get to decide how the character, you know, is. And and so much of Tell Me is coming from, you know, the work that, that we had already done to build the soundscape of Spring and Hyron out. And so knowing, all right, so this is a song about Samal, this is a song about uh, dying, this is a song about uh, your relationship with your son. And then I can kind of paint the target around the arrow by saying, and here is how spring sounds already. Um, and it sort of it sort of all comes together in, in that way. Um, Gus Abrak says, having a Root Tales of Magic style body swap would be maybe the best thing. I don't think we've done a body swap, but we have all definitely played uh, each other playing characters. Uh, Austin has played Keith several times. It's excellent. Um, it's not as good as the real I thing. Think, I think Austin's just doing it on purpose at this point. <laughs> that Austin is just <laughs> giving opportunities to play as Keith. Uh, Panther Gray says, oh, I think you've done body swaps, Jack. I don't know what you're talking about. It's time for a production test. Uh, most of the song is now in place. Here's a production test to see how near final um, quality, near final quality arrangements sound. Uh so much of this is about you know getting the sound that is in your head when you sit down and you think of a track and you're like it's gonna sound like this you, you know you have all the, you have these big, these big sort of grand ideas about about how it's gonna fit together and, and sort of synthesize and then you have to move that sound down your arm and into the instrument um and there's going to be a process of compromise there but this production test felt amazing because it is pretty close to how I wanted the track to sound. And I knew that if I could make a production test work, I could make the track sound like this. Um, this is going to sound like a little snippet of the finished track, pretty much, um, because that's, that's what it is. That is a digital piano because I wanted this very specific reverb piano that I that I couldn't really get out of my own piano. Um, Chad has pointed out I've got the name right, finally. Great in the in the last for the, <laughs> for the production test. Finally, yeah, yeah. Um, this that, is that had some really intense uh, stereo going on. Was that in the final track? I don't remember that in the final track. It does have pretty intense stereo. It, probably what is in there gets dialed down. I'm really trying to do. Um, a sort of uh, butchered Sufjan Stevens Carrie and Lowell type thing where Sufjan will regularly, you know, hard pan a, a very similar guitar um, yeah. to One Direction to kind of get this. Like... I've got my nice headphones on and, and the, the in the first second, you've got the percussion going on hard right. And I was like, it was like, someone's behind me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't someone behind you. It wasn't. Uh, what is what's the title of this one again? Samal Performance Prod Test. No, no, the real title. Tell me. Okay. Tell me. Um. Okay. So, 
This is a track called Conduit underscore Scratch. Uh, and the Conduit theme is, um, is one of the few times that I have fully repurposed an old demo. I had a theme for Aurel uh, way back in winter when Aurel was starting to make his first appearances and I wasn't able to use it. Um, and I had always kind of liked the theme. Um, and so when the time came to do interesting stuff with Hadrian and Benjamin and Aurel in spring, um, it seemed like the kind of right place to bring it back. Um, this is my first pass at taking this winter Aurel demo uh, that I wrote, you know, years and years ago, maybe full year, year and a bit before this, and trying to write it in spring style. I think there might also be some art. No, it must have been longer than that. We shall, I can look it up in a second. Uh, art, brace yourself, you might show up here. I don't know, we'll see. No, you don't. Okay, all well and good. However, it's time to go to uh, winter. Pitch down your normal clarinet. Uh, no, I think I'm just playing flat. Oh, wow. That goes real low. <laughs> oh, uh, it goes down to an E, uh, a bass E, which is, you know. You just don't, don't hear know. the clarinet played that low that often. No, um, no. And we'll get, actually get to that in, in a later demo. This is from the 26th of February, 2017. Um, this is the February the 21st, 2019. This is two years later. Yeah, because Twilight Mirage goes on and on. Sometimes, Love it, but it goes on and on. Yes. Sometimes, in your story, the time comes to introduce a wizard. <laughs> well, this is the time <laughs> to be celebrated. Uh, and so when uh, Arel really started uh, taking the stage in interesting ways in winter, I wanted to write him a theme. And I wanted to write him a theme that didn't sound anything like the rest of uh, winter. It was going to be scary and... Um, uh sinister and have a kind of real movement to it um and a, and a real power as Arel as this really sort of frightening entity uh shows up and i wrote this cue that i thought was really lovely um and then uh the amount of work it would have taken to arrange this properly just seemed astronomical and so it got cut for time and for a very long time between, you know, uh, writing this demo in February 2017 and writing The Conduit in, in February 2019, this track was my answer to, you know, if you could go back and add music or, you know, is there is there a scene that you wish you had scored? Um, this this was a row. This track is notable because it is very, very early. I think this is literally the first take of me sitting down and kind of figuring out the idea. So it's going to be even looser than you are used to. It's not quite as bad as Wrestling Horrible Scratch, the worst demo I've ever recorded. Um, but this one is uh, is pretty loose. What is interesting is hearing, you know, um, if after you've heard this, you want to hear the thing it turns into, uh, look into uh, the, the, the track that the conduit becomes in spring. Okay. <laughs>
Okay. Um, I love how fast they cut. Yeah, just it's bye. So funny. That's the end of that. I mean this in the nicest possible way, but that sounds a little bit like a piano falling down the stairs. Hell yeah! Get it down there. The the wizards yeah. here. A wizard's no. here. No. The piano has to him. get out the front top to get on top floor. Get him out of here. Um. Okay. Let's go back to uh to spring. Uh, this is Red Jack. Um, as Red Jack uh, uh tells people to uh go and have a good time killing a dragon. Um, Red Jack is one of my favorite characters. Uh, I had so much fun writing his theme for the first Return to Mary Elder that I really wanted to kind of follow it up uh, with a distinctive theme uh, for uh, Spring. This this ends up actually being the theme for his horse. Red Jack gets his own theme for Mary Elder, and Ace is the one who gets the theme for uh, for Spring and Hyron. Um, something I really wanted for this track was to have this moment where the theme just, uh, you know, it has these really, uh, carefully matched clarinet lines, you know, it's like a two or three part harmony playing very closely. And then at a certain point, it just explodes into this, into this big clarinet solo. Um, and I think because of the timing, I never really got to do just like a huge clarinet solo, but this was one of the few instances where I left the, uh, recording going i was like let's just try this take and i turned the recording on and i played a fucking sick clarinet solo usually i save demos because i think they will be useful either as a sort of archival thing of like here's where i was or very practical where it's like i can listen back to this and you know figure this out i saved this demo just because i think it whips this is red jack solo <laughs> Red Jack. Love that fucking guy. Hope he's having a good time. Yeah. Um sprouting children. Spr sprouting children all over the place. Uh this love is a the clarinet still. After all these years, still love it. Hear it, love it. Hear it and love it. Uh, when, when we finished Marielda, um I like explicitly said to Austin, we have to put the clarinet in more stuff. We have to it's fine if listeners associate the clarinet with Marielda, but we have to break it out of Marielda, otherwise we won't be able yeah. to use the clarinet again. Um I, I love agree. I love playing the clarinet. My clarinet's over there. It needs a service. I'm a big fan. Um That's right, because it could have gone the other way. If I like I, there's no way I couldn't have I wouldn't have been able to guess if you were like can't wait to get that clarinet and more stuff, or I'm fucking done to get away from shit. the clarinet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> gotta get away. I can't be the clarinet person. No, I love it. Um, you know, I've played it forever, and uh, it is still uh, just it's it's just a delight to play. This did have pitch down clarinet, and this has a clarinet uh, yeah. double down yeah, yeah. below. It does not go that low. Um, this is uh the 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 moment that the rhizome kind of explodes and because Austin says what is happening in, in the monologue, um, I called all these tracks, what is happening? <laughs> um, I knew that I had a sense that when the rhizome came, I was kind of, kind of, um, widen, sorry, it's going to kind of widen the sound of the season. Um, you know, um, the harmonies in Hyron are usually so straightforward, and I wanted you know more adventurous chords as the as the rhizome kind of sweeps through Hyron. But but in these last moments, you know, before the thunderstorm hits, I wanted it um, to uh, just feel so sinister, something foreboding. You don't know where it's going to come. You don't you don't know uh, you know what is going to be left in its wake. Uh, I wanted something that that felt like the Hyron sound just unsettled um, slightly. Uh, my note here says no real sense of what follows that first phrase. So it's very likely that I, 
I've written something and I'm just like, I don't know. This is maybe maybe gonna fall apart. Let's see. Oh, the Discord. Discord made a sound. Let me just let me just make Discord not make a sound. There we go. Sorry. Okay, this is what is happening finale. There might be episode audio here, I'm not sure. See your first life. Yeah. Um and all through your journey home, the ground shakes and the sky rumbles with echoes of old thunderclaps. The river that carries you back towards the last university splashes up above its banks, dragging back detritus, broken earth. Yeah. Um, I think this is one of those things where I had some of the production there in the middle and, and really liked it and so wanted to be wanted to be sure that I that I kept that. Um Epilogue theme early guide. We needed a new theme for the for the epilogues. Uh I've written down here that the piano part in this one goes places. I think that's because I hadn't locked it down yet at all. I think I probably have the structure in mind, but um Sometimes I trap myself, you know, I, I write the structure for a track and I feel very confident about kind of the, the bones of it, the backbone. And then I'm like, well, the melody, you know, someone else can write the melody. And then I'm the someone else and, and, I've, and I've got myself stuck. <laughs> Epilogue theme, early guide. Next we have a scratch for the same track, and this one is almost finished, but um, I have included this here because it has an element that I pretty much uh, finished in the track and ended up cutting. Um, in this recording there are uh, flutes that come in um, over the midsection, uh, and at the time I cut them because they felt too... Mm, it felt 
very much like a, here is your traditional fantasy RPG. The elves are here. You're among the trees. We're going to hear the flute music. Now, would I leave these in now? I think this track sounds great. And maybe, maybe, I, maybe I would have left them in. Um... A lot of the time, you end up cutting stuff that is perfectly nice, pretty composing, uh, because at the time, it doesn't work. And in general, when I listen back to my work, I I sort of have to trust my gut. You know, I have to go, the impulse that I felt to cut it then, I, 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 I stand by. Um, but I do think that this, I do think that this rips. I apologize for playing essentially the track you just heard again, but this one has some, some pretty cool arrangement in, I think. going up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this shit. Moving on. I, I thought that was great. I thought yeah, those, that, those flutes sounded awesome. They yeah. sound great. They sound great. Um uh wait, the... can I turn my mic off? I'm gonna turn my mic off for the stream so that they can't hear anything. They will be able to hear you art and uh fuck it. Hang on, I'm gonna turn us all off for one second. Hello, we're uh, back. It is, it's, uh, you know, I, you know, you listen to the show and it is, it does strike me every once in a while that the, the, le the quality of the music on Friends of the Table is, uh, psychotic. Yeah. <laughs> there, it has, we have no right to have as good of music as we do. It's un, it's just doesn't make any sense. Thank you. It's. I feel like I've been given a gift that I get to work with people that I love so much, uh, and and just constantly get hit around the head with new musical challenges. Um, when when people at the you know hair salon ask me what I do for my job, and I say, oh, I'm a composer. The 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 thing that I always end up saying is, you know, the kind of thing I'm composing changes so often, and I feel like I get just the right amount of time to figure out how a season sounds and, and feel comfortable with it and do some interesting stuff. And then I get given a, my, a new thing. My one regret is that we don't get to pay Jack a million dollars. We should all be how paid a million dollars is the thing. Listen, go to friendsatthetable.cash or of us friends are... at the table shop. Yes. Yeah, and then spend a million dollars. A million dollars. Um... Brandon in the chat asked, um, I want to just scroll up and see it. Um, oh no, it's Cetius Blue asks, uh, you have the same uh, blue use uh, purple username, I think because you're both counts when we play uh, oh, uh, yeah. King of the Castle. <laughs> That's very funny. That, that, uh, that game has sort of changed the, uh, the visual landscape of the chat. Yes. Uh, Cetius Blue says, Jack, have you talked before about what your background is in music slash what the extent of your formal training is? Yeah, I... Uh, I taught myself the piano uh, and the guitar. And then, so when I was about five-ish, a bunch of people came to my school um, and as part of the like uh, local government music program, they were offering free lessons and uh, like 
six people came out and they played like six different wind instruments and were like oh you could learn any one of these for free in in this school and i liked the clarinet because it was black and silver um and that was that was quite exciting when you're five uh so i started playing the clarinet then and i had clarinet lessons until i was about 16 or 17 maybe um and then i taught myself the piano and then i started taking piano lessons with a really fantastic uh jazz pianist called john law uh when i was maybe 12 or 13 until i was about 18. um and I've, I, I grew up in a really musical house. My dad plays the violin. Uh, my mum sort of like taught the piano as a side gig for a while. Um, but I was very much in the kind of house where uh, like the lid of the piano was open all the time. Uh, and I was uh, very grateful to have been encouraged to, you know, be making music and, and have family members making music around me for a long time. Um, and then, you know, I sort of was like, oh, yeah, music's fun and and, and I, I enjoy it and I enjoy, you know, like making a tune or whatever. And then when we started making friends at the table, um, uh, I was like, I can play the guitar. Let's give it, <laughs> let's give it a go. Yeah. Um, and just to be clear, when you say the piano lid was always up, you mean uh, that the piano was free to walk around the house. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it, and, it, and it, you know, it went all over the place. It's a um, it's a famous British wandering piano. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Um I wrote a soundtrack for a video game called Castles in the Sky back in 2012, 2013. And that was really fun, but there was sort of something that happened over the course of working on Friends at the Table where I went from someone who sort of likes making music as a side thing to being like I've <laughs> this has become my job. Um and that's that's a that's a huge amount of fun. Uh, Thanata Thanathile says, "Does your family listen to the music you create for Friends at the Table?" They do. It's very sweet. I, I they 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 say very kind things. Um, I always kind of you know I like blush and feel a little embarrassed uh, in the same way that I think anybody does when uh, a family member says, "Oh yeah, your music sounds really great," but I value it a great deal. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, these ones are three little ones. They are together because they're small. Ben clarinet harmony. Benjamin names names and spidery Ben outro. Um, and what are these about? <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, during the scene where Ben uh, kind of reveals the uh, the extent of the conspiracy that has been going on in the rhizome. This is a clarinet harmony that is four seconds long, and it goes like this. I think I wrote this by accident and liked it so much that the that I just scrolled down the playhead and was like, listen, you fuck, record this immediately because you will forget. That's why it's such a clean four seconds, is because I think I've tried to be like, listen, this is how the this is how the harmony works. Uh and here is my first crack at the sequence, Benjamin Names Names. Um I really wanted to uh in this moment take the sort of um the cue that that was first associated with Samothy's anvil. You'll know it when you hear it. Um, and like build it up as this 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 consequential heavy thing, and then have it all fall apart as Benjamin kind of um by this point in the soundtrack I was using that Samothy's cue to represent a kind of institutional power. Uh and so watching Benjamin, you know, pull it apart was was really was really important. Uh this is my first go. I think Austin is in this one. Uh some of these have um uh, Austin's audio or episode audio over them because I've just exported it straight out of the program as quickly as possible uh, and left, you know, the the episode audio. I do like that for this, you've turned Austin down and <laughs> the music's much louder than it is. The, yes. We all know why we're here. It's the, uh, no, it's Austin is turned down in my demos as well. I, I, I have to listen to the music. It's like yeah. ticking away in the sense. background. What did I say? I think, I, I think we're saying the same thing. Who? Yeah, get rid I of the think. yapping. His eyes didn't leave his father's face once he heard how defeated he sounded. Um, and by saying, God. There has to be consequence. Nailed it. There has to be justice. <laughs> they have to be held accountable for acting.
against us. For acting, you don't matter. There are six of them. Their names are Helleveral, Lord Ephraim, Sunder Hamilton, Adair Ducart, Victoria Solomon. Corsican knew. They are not sovereigns. They are citizens, too. And that is my turn. Keith. Keith. Yeah. That's <laughs> just Austin was throwing to you. I think for your turn. I don't remember what happens there. Um, God, that episode fucking whips. The finale is fantastic. I, we've played a lot of Quiet Year, and a lot of people have played a lot of Quiet Year, but spring finale Quiet Year might be the greatest Quiet Year of all. It's it's fantastic. Um, but there's something something kind of counterintuitive happens with this track, where when you try and make something sound really consequential, I often feel like my gut feeling is just to is to isolate it. You know, is to say I want to hit that piano bass, I want to have the bum, 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 bum of the clarinets and just let them kind of stand on their own. And I think that that is sound thinking. Um, but but often what I sound find... Thinking. Sound thinking. Taps head three times. Often what I find ends up happening is you, you produce the effect of um, letting something stand in the middle of a very, very big empty room. And it draws your attention to the thing, but it also makes the thing seem, seem very small. Um, and so it, it can kind of backfire on you. Um, and so in Spidery Ben outro, you can hear that um, I kind of rein it in. I kind of I kind of get that power back actually by um, going in the opposite direction. I add this little ukulele part uh, that you know has this association with Marielda. But on the one hand, is this kind of thin little part. Uh, it's it's spidery, you know. Um, but I feel like it really helps accentuate the kind of the weight of of that anvil cue. I also want to give a special shout out to my hater, the clarinet part here. Um, as we got <laughs> to the end of Spring in Hyron, uh, I knew that this was kind of like the last hurrah of the clarinet. I'm not a, I'm not a great technical player. Um, I'm, I'm so rarely motivated by like, I want to do something really snazzy on the instrument. Um, I don't think that's because I'm like above it or whatever. I think it's in fact because my skill level is such that that were I to go for that motivation, I, I wouldn't produce very good music. But as we get to the end of spring, I was like, I want I want the clarinet to have this like nice real big uh, final hurrah. So I, I wrote this cue that started way up in the in the in the top end of the clarinet and then goes like spiraling down into the base of the clarinet, and then I I could play it. Uh, but I couldn't play it four times in a row and I didn't want to just use the same clip because that would be audible. Uh, and so what I ended up doing was like splicing two takes of the track together. I recorded it in two separate parts, but this clarinet cue was my nemesis for like a week and a half. Uh, this is pretty close to how it, how it ends up sounding. For acting unilaterally. There are six of them. Their names are Hell of a Rock, Lord F. Sunder Hamilton, Adair Ducart, Victoria Solomon. And Corsican New. They are not sovereigns. They are citizens, too. Very gentle up on the pedal that time. Not my usual get the fuck out of here off the pedal. Um, okay, this is the final one. This is my uh Moby Dick. This is the this is the whale of a cut track for me. Um I think I've probably shared this before. This is, I think, uh uh some of the prettiest composing that I've done that doesn't make it into the uh into the episodes. This is for a Benjamin and Blue Jay scene. This is Benjamin and Blue Jay's theme that uh you know just didn't didn't get made. I think at the time I this is an instance where I was just wrong about cutting it. I cut this because I thought it was too precious. It was kind of too like 
twee. Um, in retrospect, I think it is precious in exactly the right way for like these two uh, kids, you know, falling in love and uh, experiencing life in this spring. Um, I think cutting it was a mistake, but it's also not complete. Um, Brendan in the chat. Oh, well, you might get another chance. I might get another chance. I might get another chance. Uh, Brendan in the chat says, Jack, how often do you stick to Austin's cadence versus how often do you cut Austin's narration to fit the track? Um, about 60, 40 sticking to Austin's cadence. I will, um, I'll pretty regularly make, uh, edits to the pacing of things, but those edits are so small. You know, it's about making something fall on a bar line or whatever. Um, I never change the order of of stuff um in part because it, it's it's actual play you know uh where we make pickups we make pickups and i think we are often pretty honest and clear about where those pickups are but i want to do justice to the fact that you know uh, this is something that very often uh austin is just is just ad-libbing um and so I, I don't want to mess around too much with the order there but occasionally i will um move you know move move stuff speed stuff up or, or slow it down a little bit um, okay. It would be impossible to take into account a song that doesn't exist while playing an actual play, but then not that difficult to slide yeah. a sentence down by about half a second. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, this is Pretty Ben Harmony. This is the last one I have. find that too twee no i think i was just wrong i think i was you know yeah. i've i said earlier in the thing that it's good to it's good to trust your gut it's good to trust the version yeah. of yourself that made those calls back then but i do think that that version of me was wrong, was wrong. <laughs> i mean you know you can't can't get can't be 100 percent. can't be 100 percent. um okay that is uh the spring and higher and demos of course i you know i have more but often they are ugly or they are uninteresting or they're like for example there's a bits up here where I just I just couldn't find a midsection for a thing, uh, and I have a note that's just called midsex midsection exclamation points. Uh, you know, sorted. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for listening, and thank you for your support for the National Network of Abortion Funds um, back in July. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I am on co-host at uh, my co-host username is JDQ. And my inbox is open if you have more questions about the music. I could also answer any questions uh, briefly here in the chat before we move on to item two in our schedule. Art has something to say. <laughs> um, that's great. I want to say that my inbox at co-host is also open if you have any questions about Jack's music. And I'll just attempt to tell you what I think Jack I think would you'll say. Do, I think you'll do a pretty good job. I, yeah. If you want me to guess maybe what I think Art has to say about Jack's music, my co-host inbox is open. I will but answer those, for Art for Jack. Those are what you have. You can ask Jack questions directly. You can ask me questions about guessing what Jack mm -hmm. would say. And you can ask Keith about what I would say. You can't ask yeah. Keith about what Jack would say. That's cut, that That's not appropriate. No. Right. That doesn't follow the chain of command. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, can we maybe have a minute or two? Of course we can. I can put sure, up a yeah. I can put up a break and we can see you in uh... And I'll say mm -hmm. you know, if you like that music, you want to support the show, support Jack writing excellent music, you can go to friendsofthetable.cash. Yeah, friends at the table dot cash. Friends, 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 friends of the table dot cash. Alright, now play Chain Bastard. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> uh. Woo!
Great. Excellent. Great. Okay, uh, I'll put us on the break and we'll be back in, you know, f- five, ten minutes. How does that sound out? Closer to five. I just need to stretch my legs and not immediately follow this music. All right. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> we'll see you in a bit. Bye. Now, important news, Keith. Yeah, what's up? Uh, the exact details, and there are there are more sort of materially interesting details that we can go over when we're not on stream, but I would just like to let you know that as part of 2024's roadmap for Crusader Kings 3, they are adding the Black Death. Wow. Oh, wow. And that's going to suck. Great. We got to get back to... Let's do two. Let's just do two right away of those. Two what? <laughs> two streams. Oh. It's been so long. Let's just do it and then do one immediately again. Yeah, yeah. That sounds great. That'd be yeah. a lot of fun. This needs to be realigned. Um, so is there some background context here that you want to give art or? I don't think it would be appropriate for me to be the person to do that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, Keith and I. There's can... a there's some bias I think involved if if it's if it's me. Right. I, yeah. It's it's, not, it's good of you to recognize. Yes, it's, it's big of you. Uh, so in the very first episode of Friends at the Table, before we had sort of really figured out our deal yet, uh, we spent... Most... I think at any point in the season, Hadrian would have done this. <laughs> this, is good, this is a good question. Um, uh, Hadrian encountered a sort of small skeleton fellow in a tower on Eventide Island, the very, very first episode of Friends at the Table. What did he do to that skeleton, uh, uh, Keith? Wait, wait, wait. You're missing something. Okay. Something else happened first. Did that skeleton... So this skeleton was wielding a frightening weapon, right? Yeah, and did damage. What was the weapon? I think I took more hit points in damage at that time than when we fought the the dragon. <laughs> I, be- I believe that the Well, skeleton... no, hang on. The bias here is already starting to... <laughs> okay. So the thing number one, we go into the skeleton, the skeleton's house, yeah, or basically, what appears yes. to be his house. And if then we he, believe he, skeletons he, can own property, which they he can, hit you, <laughs> he hit you with a broom. With a broom. I cannot remember what happens in between those two things, though. Why did the skeleton go to try to hit you straight away? I think as we broke into his house, I think is, that's fair. And the way that if but I whatever sure six if, people if broke into your house, you might hit one of them with a broom. I wasn't sure if there was an attempt at a conversation. It says not a bubble. He says immediately. Okay, so immediately hits you with a broom, and then Art takes out a. Uh, you had Hadrian had a sword, right? Big sword. It was a halberd at the time, which is a which is a, a pole arm. Yeah, um, I would like arm. to say the people saying notes app as apology. Hadrian's YouTube apology. Um, that's what was promised to you. Notes app apology was literally that is the goal on the stream. Yeah. Um, I studied notes app apologies this weekend. <laughs> this is this is not the note. This is not the apology. No, the apology hasn't the started yet. It. The apology is in character, but this is art talking. Yes. Um. Uh. I think. Um. Uh, I think f- uh, during during the the scuffle, Pharaoh transforms into a puma, I think, or a bear. I can't remember if I was doing pumas yet. It might have been a, a bear. panther, a panther. No, I think that came that came later. I think it was a bear. Uh, and then uh, no questions asked. One hit KO on the skeleton. Well, hang on. I'm looking okay. at the transcript. Okay, questions were <laughs> asked. Um. Uh, Seems unfair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, he does three damage to you, Art. Well, I, I legitimately think more than I took fighting the 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 dragon. Uh, let's see. What's the line? Um, he jabs it right in your face, hits you right, right in the face in with it. Face. Uh, he's using it as a staff. Uh, and then we and then we sort of raise up. Maybe we should maybe we should communicate with the skeleton. Okay, we do talk about it. The skeleton can't speak. I propose that we get the skeleton to write something. We've got paints. Um, and then Art says that's so that's that's such a bad idea. <laughs> Group laughter. <laughs> then Keith says that's a great idea. No, I'm totally with Jack on this. Um. 
Okay. Oh, uh, I know that you shit. are also settling scores here today, Jack. Well, no, hang on, because <laughs> a smart person would stop reading here, because what happens is, and then I say, I'm not necessarily going to advocate non-lethality all the time. Fuck it. Kill him, Hadrian. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, want, I want to go on record that I am... I'm saying this into a microphone. It's curious I'm, I'm... how histories are erased like that. It is, isn't it? It's, it's, it's very funny. Uh, shout out to the transcripts team, transcripts at the table dot com. Um, it's fantastic. I think my words. Well, hang on, wait. Yeah, exactly. We, we have time. I think maybe real quick. We've got to have a. We've got to have a lamb apology for <laughs> for egging Hadrian on to murder a skeleton. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, you you have a you have a you have a subject verb tense. Probably. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Okay. Right, right, right. Well, hang on. Wait, we need to arbitrate this properly, Keith, because we might find yeah. out as we read the scene further. <laughs> no, I definitely know that I transformed into a bear to back up uh, Hadrian during the fight, but never did anything. And I'm, I'm, God, I, I'm almost positive that I never said that we should kill that skeleton. Yeah, Keith, you are taking a real, uh, uh, um. Uh, what's the word? De-escalate, de-escalation approach here. Mm, you say mm -hmm. it wouldn't take you any extra time to go just like whoa, whoa, whoa. We're cool. Stop it, please. Art insistently. No, he's going to hit me again. Austin, he's going to hit you again. Keith insistently. Then take the damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at me. Look at that. I'm the hero. Then you say go away, and you swing your thing at him. Um. You, you, Austin talks you into trying to hit it. I see the alternate universe where Hadrian dies on the first tower and what else happens? All of Hyron is different. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so then you 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 hit him and uh, Austin's words here are uh, it goes flying into a billion parts. <laughs> <laughs> you yes, you vaporized the skeleton. Yes, uh, it chatters a few times and then stops. Okay, so so we we figured this out. Hmm. All right, here we go. Here's this is this is it, the long-awaited. In some ways, it's like eighteen months. In some ways, it's like nine and a half years. But you know. <laughs> <clears throat> I should have proofread this. If there's any typos in here, I'm just gonna read them like like Ron Burgundy. I think that that's true to the notes app apology style. Yeah, and probably Hadrian too. I have to ask, who uh, are you saying this to? Are you saying it to the Twitch chat? Is this a sort of Huntopedia thing where it's like Hadrian is briefly stepping outside of the story to address the? I don't know. At one point, directly? I. I don't I, I I don't even know if I should tell this. At one time I pitched this to Austin as like, you know, Benjamin would be there, like telling Hadrian how to do this and what the process was. And we could even like and then but that felt like a little too meta. And then at one point, and this was entirely my idea, and Austin shot it down completely. I was like, we could use this as like a ref a reflection on Hadrian's bad deeds in the form of a letter sent to Hella asking Hella and Adair to return for whatever this spring epilogue game is going to be. <laughs> oh, damn. But, um, but Austin didn't like that idea, so it's not, it's not what this is. I think true to the to the notes app ethos of it, uh it it when I think of a notes app, I think of less of like an apology to whoever you've wronged but more of an apology to the people online who are mad at you and so i guess this would be sort of a letter to the community yeah i think that's i think that is what it feels like on the page yeah yes okay oh austin's here oh hi austin <laughs> hi austin well it's been 18 months ali and janine certainly had time to prove it by now <laughs> um Hit it, Hadrian. Fuck it, Hadrian. Kill him. Yeah. What did I say? Um, um, I think you said fuck it, Hadrian. Kill him. Also, I think Austin should tell us when he's here. <laughs> <laughs> you can check. It's a, it is available to you. Uh, 
Okay, sorry. Let me let me let me shake off. Let me shake off art for a minute. Oh, what a coincidence, Austin! What a coincidence! That's not shaking off art. There's <laughs> that's, no that's Hadrian. The opposite of what? shaking off art. What if Hadrian uh, Hadrian arrives and he kind of sneers a little? What a coincidence! You're asking me to apologize <laughs> at this moment. This is new. <laughs> this is a new character I call shit, Hadrian. Yeah. <laughs> I have spent my whole life training to protect my community from the horrors that live beyond the walls. First, I did this in Velis and the surrounding areas, and then as a traveling adventurer before settling my family here in what remains of the university. I was given great power by the Church of Samothes, and I came with many teachings about what belongs in this world and what does not. I see now that following those teachings led me to make a great mistake. When my friends and I were investigating the tower on Eventide Island, we came across a resident who had entered into a post-flesh phase of his life. I mistook his actions for aggression and his perversion of the standards of life and death as an affront to my teachings. I dispatched him without thinking. Without thinking in the moment, I should say. I have considered this moment again and again since then. How would I feel and how would I react if I felt my home were endangered by invaders? I guess some of you know the answer to that. I would have done the same thing. I would be quite upset if I reached the same end to some sort of horrid unlife that I was occupying at the time. I am sorry to the people who knew the skeleton man. I acted rashly. I should not have done it. To the people who count on me and consider me a paragon of, godly, of goodly virtue, I apologize to you too. I want to earn your confidence back. I hope you have seen in the time since that I have become more considered in similar situations. I want to always be learning from my work and to do better in the future. It is a process I will continue until my last days. That's, that's it. Wow, Hadrian. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. Yes, uh, this you're is welcome. Now, this Boy, is me being... seems sincere. <laughs> Who is this? Who's this cast member? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> This is me. I didn't mean People... to be heard. I meant to be in the background. I'm sorry. Goodbye. This is me being People Latin. saying it's a notes app's apology. I studied. I, I yeah, studied yeah. notes app apologies to write this. This is. You're all you're doing is correctly it's not identifying a, it's not what a I've done. It's an affirmation. That's yeah. a notes app apology. Yeah, and Lem's like, yeah, that was. Thanks for saying that, Hadrian. That was, you know, that was. That kind of been easy to say. Not that it takes away from, you know, what you did to that guy. And I suppose what I asked you to do to that guy. But thanks. Thank you for saying it. Well, no one remembered that you'd said that, truly. Well, it's important to be honest about who we are. You know? So what's your apology? I don't <laughs> think I really need to... I don't really think I need to go as far as an apology. But I mean, I, I could give an apology if you wanted, but I don't think that it would be, like, right to apologize, you know? <laughs> it would be cause... wrong to... You think it would be wrong to apologize? No, it wouldn't be wrong to apologize. It just wouldn't be... Hadrian has apologized, and I think it's important that we give Hadrian this moment to apologize. Right, we can give you another moment. We can give you any other moment. Great, and that's the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good apology, Hadrian. And by good apology, I mean, why did you keep saying things like awful post life? <laughs> <laughs> they are mealy. They are mealy mouth. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a mealy mouth apology. Because <laughs> I think you know, Hadrian accepts that it's wrong, <laughs> but you know, being a skeleton person still seems kind of bad, right? Um, uh, look, it's not my fault. I was brought up to think that skeletons, skeletons are an were... abomination. Well, actually, I think if we anything outside of the walls is an abomination, I think <laughs> were Hadrian's words. Arwanian in the chat says, Jack's lamb voice summoned Pharaoh. That's how it goes. <laughs> um, well, thank you, Art. Thank you, Hadrian. Apologies to the skeleton. Uh, by being a creature of fiction, he lives both at once in life at the beginning of the episode and death at the end. And so he will remain. Um, 
Want to play a card game that we made up? Sure. How do we play this? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so we are going to be playing True False War. Hang on. Wait a second. Let me... Wait a second. Okay. I'm going back to this as we figure this out. Um, we are going to open up the game in your Steam library. Tabletop Playground. And joke's on you. It's... Dice stacking. It's we're it's doing not, dice stacking again. <laughs> okay. This game's loud. This game is loud, but the chat can't hear it right now. Yeah. Austin in the chat says dice stacking. <laughs> <laughs> uh okay. And I am going to invite you to a session. Now, I will say, let me just make sure that this is visible. Visible to the chat. Now, why is that not? Ah, ha, ha, ha. Excellent. Okay. I will say, and I'm talking to my dear friends, Keith and Art, whom I love very much. You will feel the temptation when you load into this game to click shit. Don't. Okay. All right. That's tough for me. Okay. Uh, Austin and I spent an hour trying to figure this out. And at one point, he misclicked and put a blindfold over his own first-person camera, and he couldn't see anything. <laughs> um, so we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be careful. We're going to be careful here. Why do you have blindfolds on the table? I don't. Uh, the blindfold was attached to the camera. It was like uh, it was like a property of Austin. Uh, Cherimoya Destroyer in the chat says, "Do I recall correctly that True False War can go on basically indefinitely?" Yes. Um, I am going. And is that to... built into the game here? <laughs> yes. What do you mean built in? Well, you've now you've now represented True False War literally in a tabletop simulator. Uh, yes, we have. Okay. Um, well, I think a lot is... of people know this, but in the tournament rules, if the game goes for more than two hours and fifteen minutes, it is settled by sudden death dice stacking. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. I thought you nice were just going to say... It's something you locked yourself into two hours and 45 minutes. Two hours and 15 minutes. <laughs> two hours and 15 minutes. So I was off by... Okay, I'm going to turn the video off so that I can invite Art. And so you're going to want to hit join game. And you are going to want to join the game True False War. And there's a password. And the password is... That's me redact redacting my own voice. At some point, you're gonna have to say it so that yeah, you, you haven't told me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> Chad, I'm not gonna. I was gonna tell you. Um, okay, I'm putting it in live shows. The password is this. I do not see the game yet. I also don't see the game. Uh, no, that's because I haven't. I haven't made it yet. Okay. Okay. Okay, you should be able to see it. Yeah. Ooh, but I can't join. You have to type in the password first. Oh, there's... I didn't see the, the line for the password. Oh, wait, that didn't work. Oh, that's true. It didn't work. What does it say? So there's the... There's oh, the because... locked game. Click on it. There's a line for the password. Uh... Uh, but then it says uh, the join button is grayed out. I think we don't have the active packages. How do we get the package? Yes, this is active packages, true false war cards. Is there a way to... Uh, let me see. Share... Mo we need to find it on mod.io. I have to upload this mod? <laughs> uh, Hold on, wait. I'm going to try something different. I think I think you gotta upload the mod. Yeah, I think okay. you gotta upload the mod. Okay, uh, please, please bear it in. Please bear with us. Chat, please bear it. Chat, please bear it. Please bear it. Okay, okay. Let's see. 
Uh, I'm going to go into the editor. How do I... How the fuck do I do this? It, sound, it sounds like... And I don't know that this is where we're going to end up. But it sounds like I'm going to go to mod.io and, <laughs> and make an account. Because I, I think I'm going to have to download something from there. I don't... Hmm. Oh, it doesn't. I don't. This isn't. This isn't the sort of website I expected. Upload package. Aha! Uh -huh. And it's private. It will only be visible for to you and team members. You can add team members on the mod.io site. No, it's not going to be private Join? for the time being because I can't add you as a team member. Okay. So, so any. Any old jerk can go and download True False War mod. I'll delete it at the end of this. Um, I mean, I'm not okay. So it looks like you we will be able to download it just right from the join game screen. Okay. I'm looking at someone who's playing a, a game called OBTI. It's a public room, and they do have Twilight Imperium four active packages. I can just hit the download. You want to play right Twilight there. Imperium? No. <laughs> no <laughs> you're not gonna be playing twilight imperium how come um it's not gonna it happen is. tonight twilight imperium is a big game okay i am uploading this thank you for your patience chat as we uh okay upload successful right now now i'm gonna start the game again okay wow a lot of uh a lot of likes and retweets of old <laughs> Patreon uh, content right now. Oh, really? that's great. Yeah. Probably even ones I'm not tagged in. Okay. Let's see. That should be available to you now. Um, okay. I see it. I can hit the I'm download downloading button. Downloading it. All right, and now don't click on anything. Oh shit! I almost clicked on something. Where okay. did they don't click on anything? Jack said, "Don't click on anything." Okay, so hit download and then don't click on anything. No, get into the game. Well, no, join the game and then don't click on anything. Oh, I cannot join the game. You should after you've downloaded and installed the mod. You when should I be hit... able to type in the password and join the game. When I hit download, nothing happens. It's because you need to agree to the terms and conditions of mod.io by backing out to the title screen of Tabletop Playground. <laughs> okay, got Goodbye, it. Austin. I agree. All right, great. I suppose I should use this time to tweet the no, I'll leave this as a tweet. I'll tweet the apology later. Okay. As everybody knows, are you in, Keith? Yep, I'm in. True False War is the fourth favorite game in Sangfiel. It is a model, it is a, a slight difference uh, of the famous Sangfiel game False War, which in itself is based on the Earth game War. Um... In Sang Fiel, and is False War, do you think it's one more or one less popular than True False War? Oh. It's maybe it has very to be less popular. Less it's, popular. It's, it's, yeah, it's more complicated, and people don't like that. Uh, it is played with... Hmm. On the Jade Moon, which was a riverboat where this game was first introduced, it was played with a deck of the Rites of the Seven Sons, uh, which is a deck of 60 cards organized into six suits of 10 cards each. Uh, and these suits look like this. Uh, to draw a single card from the pack, you do so uh, just by clicking and dragging one, thus. Uh, if you could demonstrate that you understand this by drawing a card. <laughs> where, where is Keith? I'm right here. I did that. Where is I Art? drew this. What? Art? 
I'm here. Oh. I'm green. Have you drawn a card? Oh, okay. This is this is the first time I've seen your little. Um, how do I draw thing. a card? Which side just, of the table should I be on? Uh, we're just uh, we're just demonstrating how the mechanics work first. So I'm taking a card from the top, or I'm taking this card. Uh, the, the, top. the top. Yeah, the top. And you can hover over a card and push F on your keyboard to flip it. Shout out to Ali for making these cards. You can see here we have Ooh, the four cool. of blades. We have the five of puppets. And this is the knight of bread. And <laughs> <laughs> is that in the episode? <laughs> Uh, we have talked before about what the suits, uh, about the, the deck of cards. Uh, we didn't realize how funny it would be when we actually started uh, uh, making them go. <laughs> so we have, the suits are puppets, bread, chairs, blades, wheels, and, and this one's confusing, cards. As in playing cards. <laughs> So I'm just gonna deal out some cards quickly. Uh, so one of the cards is the four of cards. Yes. One of the cards is the knight of cards. <laughs> yep. And one of the cards is like the four of bread. Okay, and we can flip these all over and we can see here, for example, Great. these shaking hands is the traveler. The traveler is worth seven. It is the lowest of the sort of face cards at seven. This is the six of bread, seven of traveler. Eight is the knight here. Nine is the mage, which looks like what this. What is this Zen ass one right here? Where? Oh, the that's a power. mage. That's a mage, mage. okay. Casting the mage a, of chairs. Casting a spell, that is the mage I of chairs. I really need to zoom in on these, huh? Chairs. You can zoom in with um the mouse wheel. With the wheel. Yeah. yeah. It looks like the fucking, the gateless gate. I don't know what the gateless gate is. It's like a Zen thing. It's oh. like that 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 sort of like uh that sort of circle. Well, there's no hand in it, but that circle thing. This is the highest ranking card. It is the noble. This is, of course, the noble of chairs. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Okay, and there's a mnemonic for this, and the mnemonic where's the knight goes like this. The traveler. Oh. Ah, they're 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 uh. Okay, there we go. The traveler is protected by the knight. Okay. The knight True so far. is frightened of the mage. <laughs> okay. The yep. mage works for the noble. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, traveler, knight, mage, noble. And and we get the helper of these being in parentheses. Yes. Uh when traveler you is seven, over. knight is eight. Yes. Mage is nine, noble is ten. So I'm going to collect all the cards. I'm going to collect all the cards. Isn't that cool? That is cool. Uh, um, I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to shuffle it. In order to pick up a whole pack, you have to click and hold on them. This took us forever, and Austin put the blindfold on. Uh, any questions about the uh, the deck itself? No. Uh, no. Okay. True False War is played with a single deck of 60 cards split in half. So uh, I'm going to split this into uh, two decks like this and give one to Art up here and shit. One to Keith down here. These you. are your decks. On your turn, you are going to draw th three cards. Oop. Regular camera. You're going to draw three cards and place them face down in front of you in three lanes. Like this. Then, you are going to draw another card. And... And... Let me see. Did we... <laughs> now I'm trying to recall whether you look at this card that you draw... And then add it. And if you do look at it, how do you look at it secretly? There's got to be a button for look at your hand. I think the problem is that we don't have hands because these cards have to be like communal objects. Yes. I'm also, I've discovered a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that is a problem. We can fix this in a second. Uh, wait a second. Let me just check check something with Austin real quick. 
Can I move? How do I move the whole stack? Uh, click and hold it. Oh, right. Okay. You look at the card. Okay. Uh, publicly? By, publicly. Because it doesn't actually okay. matter uh, uh, if the other person sees it. And then depending on its value, you buff one of the lanes with this card. Okay. And, and these lanes are secret I to know. all of us. Before you know, yes. Okay, so I'm going like to buff my middle. Uh... Yes, but what you could do, Keith, is if you drop it like slightly near it, you can like overlay them slightly because it's okay. it's going to be added to the one below it. Okay, I'm gonna buff this side. No, damn it. Okay. okay, and then you highlight all of them by dragging over it and click F to flip them, and then we so just I'm... go lane by lane. So Art beats Keith in this lane. Keith beats Art in the middle. And uh, this is an eight plus a nine. Uh, so art takes two rounds. So takes all of these cards. And does what with them? Puts them in a little discard pile on your side of the table. Oh, not those. Oh, 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 oh sorry. Um, I'll move my, oh, hold on. I'll move my deck back. Do they need to like, do I need to stack these? Uh, you can stack them by grabbing them all and then shaking your mouse. Shut up. Oh, okay. Apparently that's true. Um, do we want to go from here or do we want to reset and like do an official start? We should reset and do an official start. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry, Art. I'm just going to pop these here. Going to flip those and put those there. And then I'm going to shuffle this. Now then, how do you rotate? Ah, uh, there do you go. You it's on win? Q and E. You win when the other player has no cards. Okay, and so I will eventually use my discard pile to refresh my pile. Yes. Yeah, like in war. Like in war. But but you should probably shuffle instead of yeah, just like putting them under. Does shaking it shuffle them? Uh, shaking it does not shuffle them. I don't okay. believe it. Um, it looks like it does. Let's well, see. deal the top card and then do that. Oh, or that. Yeah. No. No. Okay. It just shakes. It just, just moves them around. Oh, it does. It shuffles them. It was just a coincidence. Oh, okay. Well, that's a bonkers coincidence. Yeah, it shuffles them. Now, I would like to bring up uh, uh, False War in the context of when we last saw it, which is there was a tournament, a, a true False War tournament being played. There aboard. wasn't a tournament, is in fact what is the problem. The Jade Moon. There wasn't a tournament for one person because Lilycan disembarked the boat uh, when the tournament was going to be happening and found to his horror that he had missed the tournament. I consider actually that the boat disembarked me. No... <laughs> Look, we've arbitrated this on the recording, but I do think that if you get off a boat that has 200 people on it and the boat leaves, that is on you. My my feeling is <laughs> that the it, it seemed clear to me that the boat was going to stick around. And so... You never came back. You were gone for so long. <laughs> well, they didn't tell us when they were going to pull anchor. I bet that information was available. And and in fact, the uh, the wizened old woman behind the bar in some uh, pub that you have stopped into uh, later in your journey leans over and says to you, so you're telling me that you got off this boat right on the eve of winning a, a, some sort of prize that you can't remember what it was. Right. And you're just itching to go again. Right, I gotta finish. I gotta finish what I started. Who is that guy? Who is that guy you keep talking about? The bug fellow. Bug fellow. Bug fellow. Oh, Duval. <laughs> I know a guy who knows a guy who could set up a venue for you. And uh, this woman breaks down a a distant uh, the location of a distant tavern. Uh, it is the only building on a ravaged hilltop. 
There are little lights in the windows. There are, you know, murky lanterns soot-stained burning on the uh, flight of steps up towards this tavern. And when you and Duval arrive, you find that it is absolutely empty. Uh, there is a true false war deck on a table, and there is a woman standing behind the bar, and uh, there is uh, your your friend, the 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 other person here. This game is part of some uh, large scale uh, Sangfiel curse or, or or bet or deal that you are not familiar with, uh, but but you have been drawn here by the uh, the desire to play true false war against your dear friend slash nemesis, M. Leopold Duval. Nemesis? Uh, nemesis, nemesis. true, tr- card nemesis, true false war <laughs> nemesis. Uh, true right. false nemesis. We, we had some disagreements, but n- nemesis is... Uh, there were some pretty severe disagreements, I think. I, I think I've got to give it to Art that of the people in the party, some of them are more obvious nemeses. That is, yes, that is, that is true. Um, okay. Uh, my first impulse in arriving in this room was to immediately try and break out of it, but I can't clip out through the wall in any way, which is a shame. I want to go exploring Ooh, yeah. the desert. I, I didn't even realize that, that I could, like, move around. You can't go out the door, sadly. I have Can to imagine. Upstairs? No, you also can't go upstairs. I have to imagine that you are also trapped on the main floor of this empty tavern on a hill, the only building on a hill. Um, at least for the time being. The vibe that I've always had for this game is like. Uh, uh, purgatory? No, the game thi- purgatory. The thing that I thought of was kind of the opposite. It was like the black two game members heaven. of the Blackwick group find themselves mm-hmm. in what would essentially be a mission in Sang Fiel, but they are too interested in playing True False War. Um as like a Sang Fiel mission, uh, you know, is is happening just right on the periphery of what is going on. But we're not I, here to play Sang Fiel today. We're here to play True no. False War. Um it does to me it feels like game purgatory. You're in game. It's a room, but it's not really a room. And I have a, I can move like I, like I have a body, but it's not really like I have a body. And in fact, if I look down, I don't have a body. And I'm so slow. And it's not just that I can't leave the room. I can't even like go next to this piano. Uh, if barred. you push Z, you can go into first person mode. And what go am I in now? Regular mode. No, this is the same thing. This is, this is not. This is the same, different. except like it turns out I'm very short. <laughs> I can barely see over the bar. I okay, am... yeah. So first person mode, you do sort of embody a floating camera versus regular cameras. Like I'm third person behind an invisible. I'm in person. a UE4 tech demo now. I'm like zooming around very slowly. Hey, who's this painting of behind the the bar? Oh, that painting is. Uh, what's the painting that? It's the the, the Zahir. No, this painting is, uh, you know, it's of the lover of the bartender uh, and the tragic story of, of their, you know, misbegotten love is what generated the curse of this place. I actually think. Hey, why that- can't I see myself in the mirrors? Uh, we're both ghosts now. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm, this is Games Purgatory. <laughs> we found ourselves in Games Purgatory. Hi, I'm This mysterious Games person Purgatory. brought us to hell. To play true false war. Um, no, actually, the the table the, the table that you are playing on is directly above a lantern in the basement that is you know guttering or something. And the focus of the curse is on this is on this flame leaping in this lantern. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, yeah, there's cards to be played. Um, yeah. So, shall we begin? Yeah. True false war 2024. I will begin by splitting the stack into two. No! (laughs) Okay, here we go. That's for Art, who is playing in green, and Keith, who Um, is playing in red. Is there a a coin that we can flip? Um... And where are my 8d6s that I need for luck? (laughs) Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Hang on, let me help. Okay, here we go. Uh, 
And let me just go over here real quick. These are just some bonus ones for the room. For the spirits. I I'm sad that I can't hold this button down and it just spawns them indefinitely. I have to click each time. What happens if you do this? Oh, what happens if you, if you select them all and then hold them and then... It hey, look at that. Oh. It forms them, but then... Just drops them. Yeah, it's like... There's a... There is a button that rolls the dice. Yeah. Um, I don't recall what it is, but uh, of course we, we are apps. We're definitely going to play with the my the regional variant um, uh, that that I'm familiar with, where the beginning of the game um, you toss a coin, the coin decides who's playing with honors. Honors doesn't do anything, um, but you just know who has it, um, and then if you win oh. with honors, then it does say that you have honors. Okay, okay, so who's going to toss the coin? Um, all right, you can toss the coin. Do we have a coin? <laughs> um, no. Uh, <laughs> I can roll okay, it. okay, do okay. Do? I have a, a small plastic elephant in okay. one of my hands. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think that elephant is in your left hand. I think it's right hand. Wrong. The elephant is in my right hand. Keith is playing with honors. I'm playing All with right. honors. Um. Okay. So I have to get hold rid of your applause. By the way, dice. Did you see the dice explode? Was <laughs> I the only one who saw that? I did not see that. No. The dice exploded. All right, Art. I'm gonna have to confiscate your dice. <laughs> what? <laughs> You never mess with a gambler's lucky items. <laughs> How you get shot. Oh, that's true. Okay. Here we go. Look, if you wanted to keep your dice, you should have been playing with honors. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're going? We're going. I think the woman at the bar says, you may begin. Oh, does... Art, do you think this side is your side? Because I thought this side is my side. I've been on this side the whole time. I also have been. <laughs> no, you you dealt out of that side last time. No, no, I was behind the bar, or I was I, the bar was behind me. I don't dice side M Leopold Duval vacant empty side lie like Duval to play first. I thought we played at the same time. Oh yeah, you do you do play at the same time. You do play at the same time. That's why the flipping of the coin doesn't decide who goes first and just decides who's playing with honors. Who's playing because with honors? Because there's no first. Ooh. Mm, Noble of Wheels. Noble of Wheels, the highest ranked wheels card. Beautiful. You may flip, says the woman. Absolutely no light behind her eyes whatsoever. Okay, so that's uh, th oh, that's all cards for Keith. Uh, a one, a four, a one, and a two. Keith takes this handily. Keith takes all these cards. <clears throat> this is what it means to play with honors. This is what it, it means. It might not be literally important, but it's spiritually important. You may play. Ooh, two of Ooh. blades. And uh, art, what is that? What's that card? That's a traveler of puppets. A traveler of it's puppets. Worth seven. Worth seven. And the puppets are marionettes. They are marionettes. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh crap! <laughs> oh damn it! <laughs> okay. Let's flip. It doesn't matter, I I'm guess. Ready. But... Oh, you can control click. You don't have to click and drag. You can uh, individually click on the cards. Mm. Okay, so here we That's... have six, seven, eight versus uh, uh, Keith wins that one. Art wins that one. Art wins, Art this wins one. that one. Art takes all the cards. Whew. One to one. Yeah. 
you know what they say? You know what they say? You're putting your cards too close to my pile. These sounds are very satisfying. Can we bet our channel points on this? I don't like I don't playing do gambling games in Twitch chat. <laughs> like, even if it's this silly. Yeah, I, I I brought up a I brought up something like that one time, and everyone said no. Mm. It's like it's playing with actual channel points, and I don't. I don't well, vibe not, with that. Well, they're not channel, channel points. points don't do anything. Worthless. You just can buy emojis with them, and we only have we only have like ten minutes worth of emojis. No. <laughs> okay. Jack says no. I just realized um, as well that people can't hear these card sounds. Now they can. You All may right. Flip. Oh, oh no! Ooh. ooh, that's me, right? Art wins that. Keith wins the middle. No, Art wins. No, I win. I, I win. Oh, Art wins. Oh, I missed this. I missed counted the uh, the column here. Okay, that's all for Art. Damn. And I have a flash that's been pointed out. Though. Yeah, uh, we're gonna add a Balatra Joker that means the. Ooh, two threes. Two threes. Three, Whoa, well, it's a, it's three a three, three square off. Well, you know what they say. You put your threes in the middle on a three square off. You don't have to. I agree. No, no, they say that. <laughs> I agree that they say that. Oh, wow. That's me. That's art. That's me. Yeah, so you take yep. these. It's a, it's a brief comeback for... for uh, for Keith, Keith is a tie game. Keith just oh, it's sixteen. Yeah, it's a tie game. Sixteen to sixteen. Am I right that both players can secretly look at their three cards? No, no one knows how to play this game. No, <laughs> Austin and I checked this specifically. You are not. Ooh, Knight Ooh. of Cards, the All famed right. Knight of Cards. Well, four of Bread's gonna give me luck on the end here. That's what they say. The four of bread is lucky on the left side. We haven't seen the knight of bread yet. A card so funny that it made Keith just crack up immediately on seeing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Eight plus six. Oh, that's art. Six and two, five and eleven. Yeah. That's one for art. All right. Slim lead, a slim lead. PVJVMVS, which I guess is pajamas. <laughs> There's, wait, LMAO, how many suits? There are six suits. Puppets, blades, wheels, bread, chairs, and cards. Um, we did get an explanation of, uh, of which ones mean which. Let's see if I can remember. It's uh, Traveler, <laughs> then Knight, then Mage, then Noble. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Start again seven. Traveler is a value of seven. Uh, knight is a value of eight. Mage is a value oh, sorry. of nine. We're talking about suits, but those are the face ten. cards. Yeah. Um Jeepers. Okay. You know, I've been I haven't been I, I've been neglecting my right here. I'm gonna I'm gonna fortify my right. Holy shit, oh, look fuck. at that. That was terrible. No, it's great, Wait, right? What is this? What is this? This is a tie. This is nine to nine. Nine to nine. Oh, but you win but it I, anyway. But I win anyway. Okay. Yeah. Well, so, uh, Jack, the reason I said it was terrible was because I added my three to my noble, but my noble doesn't need three added oh. to it. So I, it would have been, it would have done yeah. better if I put it somewhere else. Yeah. Dorna says, cards is a suit. And Lentil Sweet agrees. Cards is a suit. Cards is a suit. Tied up again. All tied at 24. Now, On we this, could play the last this. hand of the first... Second shuffle. Last. No, yeah. we're not gonna have four left. Oh, oh, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Because of the, because uh, of the bolster card. Traveler oh, of wheels. Good. Like I said, it's lucky to have the four on the left. Four on the left counter with heft. That's what they say. 
Now, there is a little twist coming up, uh, which is you're not actually going to draw from your discard pile immediately. You are going to play a hand of two cards. Next. Oh, Oh, this is you, Keith. This is me. That was a a sweep. That was a clean sweep. Haunted Doll says, Marvel Snap update looking hot. (laughs) Okay, we have a two-card round. Okay. How do you play a two-card round? So you just play one, right? Yep, play one, and then, and then buff it. it. <laughs> and then buff it. Well, there's, no, there's no point in looking. I have three. I have the lowest. Holy oh, shit. You have a noble. Oof. This is going to be rough. Okay. Now, flip these, shuffle them, and, then and shuffle. start again. Uh, no. At this point, chat, you may have noticed this game could go on for a while. Yes. And w- and we're going to see it through. We are going to see it through. Wait, but now on this, theoretically, we have different numbers of cards. Yes. Do I just automatically win? Well, what would you win? I have, I'll have no card. Well, I'd win the whole set. No, I have an even, I have a divisible by four number. You're going to play until someone has no cards left. I think the question is, we just got to a state where we each only had one card and one bolster. But this go around, I'm going to have three and Art will only have two. Yes. No, no, I'll have an even number of hands, but then you'll have... Oh, you'll have an even number of hands too, just more hands than me. Yes. Gotcha. Got it. Okay. All right. Cherimoya Destroyer says, to be precise, it will go on for two hours and 15 minutes and then Art and Keith have to fight, right? Okay. Ooh. The Double Traveler. Oh, I got Double Traveler. That is a wash, yeah. Oh, no, no, well, not a total wash. No, you you, you won. Yeah. So I'm in a wash for you. I thought I won all three. But I did not. Discard. Or maybe this will take one more trip. <laughs> it could also just take one more trip. It could just take one more trip. Oh, a knight. Yeah. I'm drawing. I, I got good cards over here. Yeah, you might uh you might have had a stronger opener. Also, depending on how it works, certain face cards will accumulate in players' decks. Oh my god. Ooh, wow. <laughs> Mutant snake eyes. <laughs> of course, the one of Chad, the one of bread, the <laughs> one of puppets, and the knight of bread. <laughs> they call the one of puppets the loneliest puppet. The loneliest puppet. What a good hand to win. Now I have all these ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, you won't have them in the rest of the these hands. Four okay. of puppets. Four of puppets. The puppets are the creepiest. An Cosm says, it genuinely seems so hard for someone to cheat in this game. There was a lot of cheating uh, in in the on the Jade Moon. That's because there's magic in Sangfiel, and unfortunately, Tabletop Playground has not, you know, uh, you know, not, we can't model there's magic. There's an element of, there's an element of... Uh, one, two. This is for me. This one goes to Art, but that's two, one. Yeah, you win again. Uh, oh. there's a, there's a, <laughs> there's an element. I Lie Likens the True False War champion. Yeah. No, Duval is the True False War champion. No, that that ruling is null and void. Duval was won there. the trophy that you win for winning True False War. And we will see if he gets to keep that trophy. Flame. I didn't bring it. I said on the stream that I was not defending the bracelet. Flame reflected in the woman behind the bar's eyes. Downstairs, the flame in the lantern, you know, leaps up through the top of the lantern. Weird shadows cast in the wall of the basement. You can be the true false war champion. You cannot have the... Uh, this is you that's, again. that's me again. Wow, like is doing pretty well. Let's see. How much do you have? You have eight, 16. Wow. 24. It's, it's 44 to 16. It's it's gonna be over soon. These, these are, are dire three straits. ones in here, yeah. 
Keith has all the tens. <laughs> well, eventually I will have all of the cards and you will have none of the cards. That's just how it plays. Queenside Castle says, this is what it means to play with honors. This is what it means to play with honors. And the crowd is, mu is muttering that. There's themselves. no crowd. <laughs> it's just there's you a crowd. and this yes, woman. There's, a, there's like dozens of people here. <coughs> Famously, this, this, this... I feel them. Oh, oh. There, let's see. There's an element of... Um, uh, there's an element of, of, of gamesmanship to, like, there's nothing preventing either of us from waiting until the other one has placed the card. It's sort of a waiting game. <laughs> yes. Thing. I noticed that you do wait until I place it, and it does annoy me. <laughs> you <laughs> could, but you also <laughs> could do that. <laughs> oh, wow. Lots of puppets there. <coughs> oh, that's to, that's, uh, that's you, Art. Oh, is it? Yeah, Three right. And six, 11, and seven. Yeah. Okay, clawing it back oh, I, just I a missed little. missed one. Say again, Jack? Clawing it back just a little. Yeah. Well, I had, at that point, I think I had won four in a row. So, um, yeah. Oh, I'm taking a card to flip it, and that's not how you play the game. Nope. What, what number was that? Was that was that a six? six. All right. That's an eight. Um... Right here. Okay. Uh, oh, that's you. That's me. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, Art, you have to you have to start drawing from your discard pile. Keith still has. Oh, 12 I should shuffle cards. it, right? Yes. Yeah. You don't mean. You don't mean something weird. No. Goodness. Pick up. There we go. All right. Take it easy, cards. I only meant to shuffle you twice. Six of wheels. It's a classic. Three, Three of, of wheels. wheels. It's a lucky wheels. The mind games on display here, chat. <laughs> oh, fuck. I flipped the wrong thing. <laughs> Let me shuffle that so we don't. Oh, I think you take this one, Art. Yeah, this is for you, Art. I'm distracted by my buffoonery. Thank you. It is very satisfying every time to do that little shake gesture. I do like it. I do like that. Yeah. But you know what's really fun? <laughs> it's a stacking dice. Dice stacking. Just get a dice stacking cam here. Ah! Would you have a... Two. Two? All right. Um... Ooh. Ooh. This is that's a tie. tied. We're tied in the middle. Or we're tied in the end. No, you're it's oh, even yeah, it's a complete no, tie. Total no, is also not. the oh, same. That's eight plus two is ten. Oh, okay. So, and that's six and 12. six is twelve. Right. So this is it's oh, a win on this yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's another Keith wins uh, the middle and then right. the end is tied. Oh well, I'm playing with honors. Uh in a Tie. In the event of a tie, uh, we know what happens in the event of a tie. Uh, die stacking. It's not die stacking. Uh, We're out from the player with honors wins a tie. Play another round. That's <laughs> ludicrous. And Play another round wins, is just... The one who wins the next round gets it all. Okay, wow. so should we put the stack off to the side? Yeah. I'm at one That's big That's intense. Stack, but... Traveler of Both got face cards, but wings. the noble. The noble. The traveler is a handshake? It's two travelers holding hands as they walk together. 
Oh, okay. Sure, I see that. I thought it was two travelers shaking hands. And the noble is a hand with a ring on it? They Well, Keith, they're shaking hands, but in that moment, they realize the intimacy that they have shared, you know, is is more than maybe just that of they're traveling companions. Hands. And then, then they hold hands and walk down the road together. Um. All right, so I will put my travelers on the road. And I'll put my traveler, my noble, in the castle. That's what they say about these things. Yeah. Three. Oh my Oof. god, that mage. Oof, that's me. This is all for that's Keith. You. It's all it's all for Keith. People are gonna be this is people are gonna be writing about this game in the history books. Well, if anybody ever hears about it, and in fact, you know, at that moment, the door to the uh, side room opens and a pale, uh, you know, sickly looking man connected with some sort of weird thread to something in the basement emerges, you know, silently takes his place standing next to the bartender. Uh, I mean, I don't know what you mean if anybody ever hears about it. I'm going to be talking about this constantly. It's going to be a big part of my story. <laughs> it's, it's... Maybe we'll never leave this place, though. Mm, I, after I win, I'm leaving. That's yeah. My we're plan. gonna do it. Um, we can't leave word? now. Chime prequel rules, right? Where it's like, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe Duval just dies here. Ooh, that's art. Oh yeah. Clawing so the last Duval's gonna die here. The last thing that he's gonna do is not give me his trophy that I deserve. It's not even here. It's crazy that you didn't bring it. That's the whole thing of it. No, I won that tournament. I won the trophy. Right, with an asterisk, and the asterisk is that I was supposed to play, I didn't get a chance to play, and I was obviously going to win. But you didn't play. You can't win the t trophy if you didn't play. The boat disembarked from me. You disembarked from the boat. That's not how I understand You were not thrown from the boat in some sort of boating derby. It was implied the boat would wait. That's not how cruises work. That's you. Uh, many people said they would buy a deck with art inspired from this. It's very hard to do. I've, I looked into this at the time. It's just like <coughs> getting a get custom, custom printed deck of cards is, is hard. I also want this to exist. Chad is asking who made the art. Uh, the faces of the cards were made by Ali, and the back of the card was made by Austin. And the cards as 3D models usable in Tabletop Playground were made by me. It was a, it was a collaborative effort. Oh, they're really trying to psych each other out here. The two impassive faces of the man and the woman standing behind the bar this following is part the cards. Of why, this, is, this is part of why a game can take forever, because there's no time limit for dropping your card. No, there is no time limit for dropping your card, but if you do wait too long, they put a box on the table. Well. The, bo the box doesn't do anything. No, Fuck. this is going to backfire on me. No, it did. Is. Oh, this is another tie, though. Wait, but I have a higher total score. Is that higher total score know. wins? It's, uh, you know, if oh, it, oh wait, nine, ten, thirteen, seventeen, and I have nine, ten. No, I don't have a higher total score. Oh, so I, I have a higher total score. <laughs> I thought it, a tie was a tie until that good response uh, to the box in the chat. Uh, Thought right says intimidation bot. Uh, intimidation box real paradoxia says the box is out good night owl says oh wow the box is out this is getting serious <laughs> i'm not a dad let the box intimidate me god i'm okay ah <laughs> oh i really fucked that one up. oh wow i can't i cannot believe my one actually helped me win this aisle all right it's almost over last hand no is wait this me? Doesn't... Uh, oh no that's you. You win okay. the two wins. Yeah. Oh, uh, last hand, but you could claw it back, you know? You really could mm. claw it back. 
I it think might take there's... longer than we have to play to call it back, but I have a one. Oh no. I have a six. I think I've your last least... hand? Yeah, I think I've at least wow. two ones in here too. That's good though. We've been going for three hours. I'm 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 fine with this. Oh, ready? That's fair. Yeah. Ready. You win this one. I win this one. And on the end. Oh my god. Good game. Good game. Good game. Wow. I will I'll be taking my trophy. It's not here, you can't have it. Again, it was never even suggested you could have the trophy. The trophy is for the winner of the tournament. This is the final. If you'd like, if you'd like us to get you some sort of new trophy, we could talk about that. But the trophy for the tournament on the boat is not is not negotiable here. This is just a rain delayed final round of the boat tournament. It's not though, because that's not how a tournament works. You would not have had a bye to the final of the boat tournament. God, sticky threads start to uh, pour from beneath the floorboards underneath your feet. You know, you don't notice them right now. You might not notice them for another 30 minutes or so when you, you get up to leave this after arbitrating this argument. But as you begin to stand, uh, you know, you find that your feet are, are bound to the floor once again. Uh, and I think, you know, it is at this point that uh, we would go over to the heart character sheets as, you know, the, the doors of the basement swings open. And, and and something begins to emerge and, and Duval and, and and like begin to descend into this uh into this cursed inn on a hill uh where they were lured to play a card game. But that is outside the remit tonight. Uh thank you so much for coming out. We brought you a discussion about Hyron music. We heard a, a, a pretty a pretty uh, awful apology. Well written, but 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 insincere. Um sincere. I sincere. Mm-hmm. I thought there was only one character that delivered an insincere apology tonight. Yeah, and it was an Hadrian. And uh, and uh, we have a, a continued victor, uh, or rather, the rightful, new champion. the rightful champion. I say continued because I feel like Like was the one who went on about true false war so much that that you, you've just sort of ascended to the. To the, to the well, place. no, it's like when the when Texas won the World Series this year, it didn't mean that Houston didn't win the World Series last year. That is true. It's hard to argue with that. I think it's hard to say which times Houston won the World Series do and don't count as winning the World Series. Specifically, <laughs> specifically that team. I mean, I just invite you to look at... The, the championship banners they've put up in Houston, and they're all there. And no I, one I, even, I, nothing think, bad even happened to anyone in Houston. I, I just, just feel like I feel like I'm still winning this. How many do you think they let me put down before it broke? I don't know, but I can I know. try? Can I try shaking them? Yeah. Let me know when you're done, and then I'll shake them. Uh, let me do 20 That's more. That's how this ends. Let me do 20 okay, more. Okay, yeah, do 20 more. That's a good one, number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, adding... 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, Yeah, it does 15, seem like they're, 16, maybe, 17, they're disappearing 18, 19, now. 20. Okay. Oh, it's a horrible mass. It's a roiling mass. I can't even select them all. It won't let me. Oh, whoops. Let me... Oh, we got a deck of cards there, too. I managed to make all the die sort of exp Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right, hang on. What if I grab them all? Or I... Yeah, now... Sorry, I, I, I got, I'll drop them here. You can grab okay. them. I grab them all. And then I go into first-person mode, right? Right. And then I go, no, I can't. I was hoping to go as far up as I could, but instead I'm going to drop them all over this piano. What if they plink? What if they plink? Wow, my computer plink. does not appreciate this. The game is frozen. Oh, yeah, this is getting chunky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the view from here was very funny. Puppet oh. King, this is not Tabletop Simulator. This is Tabletop Playground, a better program. They do because not. Because it has this. 
They do not like it when we do this. Wow. Oh. Yeah, the game is is bragging. I, I can't interact the with games. the game anymore. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> we creep broke it. <laughs> Pow. Um well uh you know if you want something to do uh after this, um a couple hours ago before the game or the before the stream went live, I put up this week's episode of Media Club Plus. Oh, fun. Um, where, where are we at? What's happening in, in Media Club uh, Plus? That's episode 12 of Media Club Plus. We are uh, heading out with Gonan Killua as they go home to Whale Island. Oh, Gonan that was introduces a fun episode. his new best friend, Killua, to Aunt Mito. And we learn a bunch of stuff about uh, Jing Freaks. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, you can go to friendsatthetable.cash to support what we make. Um, it is, uh, it, it means a great deal to us, uh, to be able to do things like buy groceries, uh, and your support enables us to do that. Uh, we have, we are very thankful. Uh, anything else we want to plug? Uh, I would like to plug the run button podcast, which, uh, you know, we don't do that often, but when we do, it's really good. Uh, every time I record a run button podcast, I'm like, wow, these are so good. Uh, that came out, um, like what day is today? Yeah, you know, two Tuesday. days ago, uh, came out like Sunday night, uh, and uh, it's really good. It's on YouTube. It's on uh, your RSS feed. It's really long. We talk about Pal World and then a few other things. Art, anything for you? Uh, yeah, check out friendsthetable.shop to get some of our fun merchandise. Um, I was be like, and there'll be more soon. There won't be, but you know, eventually there'll be more. Yeah. Um, and if you liked any of the music that you heard today, you can go to notquitereal.bandcamp.com to uh, hear more of it. And it's finished over there. It's, there's no demos. It's it's completed music. Yeah. Uh, if you want to support Jack making all of the excellent music for the show, which is a tremendous effort, then you can go to Content Burger. No, that's mine. You can go to <laughs> friendsofthetable.cash and give money over there. If you want to support me spiritually, you can listen to the Steely Dan album Countdown to Ecstasy. Um, oh, yeah. and, and tell me what your favorite song is on it. Because they're all great. My favorite song on Countdown to Ecstasy is My Old School, because I'm basic. Hey, I mean, that song's so good. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable how good that song is. Yeah, uh, uh, and it always makes watch, me happy watch to them, hear it. Go watch the music video for it. They're having a blast. Well... Have a good night, everyone. Wait, wait. Wait, I have one more. No, no, I'm not going to do it. It's not funny okay, enough. I have one more. It's not, it's not funny, but I'm still going to do it. Um, the Run Button shop, runbutton.shop, I fixed. We had a fruit of grape tumbler up there, and I made it better. So you can go buy the new fruit of grape tumbler. It's pink instead of white now. Um, and I put up our uh, really excellent Illuminati Silent Hill shirt. It's got pyramid head on it like he's the Illuminati pyramid. Illuminati Pyramid Head. Pyramid, Illuminati Head, Pyramid Head is yeah. not from the Illuminati, even though there are a lot of cults in that game. He is instead a manifestation of shame and guilt, right? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that what the Illuminati is? Uh, uh, no, the Illuminati is people, is humans, right? Pyramid Head is a well, sort of is a sort of uh, bleak creation of a of a single man's guilty conscience. People's people's belief in the Illuminati is a manifestation of shame and guilt. That's true. That's true. Uh, whereas Pyramid Head is a manifestation of shame and guilt that will kill you with a sword. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Has Good anyone night. noticed that the cast list on this is just completely random? It's not on alphabetical. What? It's not It's not on the Twitch page. Huh. It's Austin. Like, it's Alex, almost, it's Austin, somebody. then it's almost alphabetical. And then it's not, because Keith would be. Yeah, I don't know how, how this got done. Have fun. Anyway. Well, good night, everybody. Good, good night. night.